How you doing? What's up? I Facebook. All right. Who did I do? Oh, oh, hi. Yeah. All right. Oh, whatever it's called. Oh, yeah. Facebook, you. Facebook, you. Oh, I know. are really cold. So if we can today, kind of keep it to a minimum of time. And yeah. Anyway, so the Bradley Manning Federal Building. Uh, yeah, okay, I can start there, yeah. So uh, tomorrow, um, there's a, a rally uh, for Bradley Manning. Um, our friend Melissa has been out at Fort Meade this week at the protest. For those of you uh, uh, that haven't followed the case, basically Bradley Manning was in the U.S. military, and he was accused of taking all these diplomatic cables and other stuff out of the military computers and then releasing them um, to WikiLeaks. That, at least that's the argument the government makes. So they were trying to throw the book at him under a military tribunal. And uh, so there's, uh, there's been rallies all over the country and the world. Um, and so next Tuesday, uh, there's a rally at the federal, or, or sorry, excuse me, tomorrow there's a rally at the federal courthouse. Um, and uh, yeah, just uh, uh, it's at 5 to 7 p.m. The federal courthouse at 300 South 4th Street. Um, and uh, bring signs and friends. Uh, there's also uh, a um, weekly walking vigil every Tuesday from 6 to 7 that meets um, at uh, the corner of Main Street Southeast and East Hennepin Avenue. So that's like across the river from downtown. That meets at 6 on Tuesdays. So, um, anyway, so that's the Bradley Manning situation. By Dealer South? Sorry. Uh, 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 yeah, it's like a little... Any corner. Yeah, it's, it's uh, farther, all the way across the bridge, I guess. But yeah, like Hennepin and Main Street, opposite river from downtown. Anyway, so that's the Bradley Manning stuff in town. So, defend whistleblowers. What's that? Uh, yeah, the the event tomorrow is in front of the federal courthouse at five, and then the weekly thing is on Tuesdays, and they meet at it's from six to seven, meeting like at Main Street, uh, Main Street and Hennepin Avenue, like across the river from downtown. So that's that's the two Bradley Manning things on tap, and Melissa should be back soon, and hopefully she can tell us more about what it's like at Fort Meade. So that's that. Uh, yeah, there's so um, the retail workers are are going to go on on strike. The address is ctul.net, and so like first thing in the morning, like next Tuesday, June 11th, they're going to be down at 900 Nicollet Mall, and then there's supposed to be a concert with Maria Issa and I Self Divine at that location at 4 p.m. So that's that's going on June 11th. Um, so the June 10th is the deadline for the strike. And you can get more info at ctul.net. One question, though? All right. And, um, uh, yeah, sorry. Yes, yeah. Sorry Hang on. Yeah. Exactly who are they? Meaning what workers? Um, uh, they're uh, retail janitors. They, they oh, clean tar Target and other stores in the Twin Cities. Yeah. There was a cover story in City Pages about oh, one of them being, you know, sexually assaulted and the lack of accountability there. So there's real workplace safety issues in play. So, yeah. Um, then the other one, uh, so EXCO um, is an experimental college of the Twin Cities. It's a free college. There's online registration for classes. There's a medic training coming up, which you know about. Do you want to mention that? or? No, no, it's just one of the things. It's real fast, yeah. But like... We could cover it later. There's all. I just want like there's one also one about mass incarceration um, that starts June 9th, and that's at the the knock office at 911 West Broadway. There's like about eight sessions in that class talking about the prison industrial complex. So that's one of the free classes going on uh, under this Exco umbrella. So you can go to exotc.org to register for free classes. Basically, what the way it works is if enough people sign up for classes, then they hold them. So, so it's all, it's all starting shortly. Yeah. Um, we just had some few people. I'm sorry, Dan. Sure. We just had a couple of new people that just walked in. So if we can just like go around the table and say our names and what group we're part of, maybe that'd be awesome. Um, I'm Loki. Uh, I'm everywhere, nowhere. I'm Gal, and I'm in Venus. <laughs> um, I'm Del, I'm like the new chef, one of the new chefs. Yay. My brother, James, who will be my assistant. Yay. Every other Wednesday. I'm thinking the macaroni and cheese is really good. Yay. Hey, there you go, Mary. Compliments already.
used to. I'm Panda. I'm awesome. <laughs> Nathan. Uh, yeah, no comments. Organizer. Organizer. Yay. Extreme warrior about everything going on. Oh. Joan Scully. You know. <laughs> Bob County Junior Candidate Journalist Transit Revolution. Huh. <laughs> I wish I could say that. Name. Ten seconds. This is Kobe. Oh, hey. Can I see you in Occupy Homes and Occupy Minneapolis? I'm CH. I'm Mike. I do stuff too. I'm James and I sit home and watch wrestling on Monday nights and Friday nights. Here you go. I guess it's my turn. I'm Jan and I'm tired of injustice. Patrick and uh, just here to learn. I'm ML. <laughs> Dan. I'm Patricia. I'm Gillette. Eric, Patricia is with Idle No More. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm with Idle No More, and I'm also with Occupy and then, and I'm not with Occupy Homes, just so that I'm just going to say that. Um, I do video. Yeah, there, there's a mayoral forum um, tomorrow um, at 6 p.m. It's at the Sabathony Community Center at 310 East 38th Street, and it involves a lot of neighborhood associations, specifically about people of color and, and those kind of issues. That's tomorrow at how 6. How many people? How many mayor candidates? Um, it says Andrew, Cherry Holmes, Hodges, Lane, Mann, Samuels, Schiff, Thomas are the uh, confirmed attendees. So they let the Green Party guy in. That's step. All right, sweet. Well, you should be. Cool. All right. American Drug War Yeah, uh, it's tomorrow, Minnesota Normal is hosting a premiere for a movie called American Drug War Two, and it's at the AMC Theater in Roseville. It's uh, ten bucks. Might be able to find free tickets. Um, the first movie was awesome and covered like corruption and direct interviews with people. So that's tomorrow at seven thirty. Great film. Is there an American Drug uh, War one? All right. Is there an American Drug War one? Yeah. Okay. Mike McKevin Booth. What's FLA? But where are you? Oh, I am. 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 Questionnaire that was sent to all the at that time known candidates for mayor, and we graded them A through Kind of sitting over here because I'd like, like to be off camera. Mm -hmm. yeah, sure. sure. It's all right. We're going to have a table at the city convention, and we're looking for particularly non DFL or um, activist types to staff the table for us. So if you could devote two or three hours on uh, Saturday, June 15th, uh, we'll have to know ahead of time if you're coming so we can arrange credentials so you can get in um, as a non-delegate. Um, so it should be fun. We're going to be hanging out at this table and all the, all the troublemakers. So, um, Depends why you want to not yeah, give me, it out. Let me give you my number. If anybody's interested, um, write this down. 612-388-1109. Um, Another way you can hook up with us is we have a really um, large group on Facebook called Minneapolis Labor um, Association. Um, what was so it? You know, Minneapolis. Ask, ask to join that and then leave me a message. You can friend me on Facebook. I'm Deborah Keeper Ramage. Uh, so any of those ways you can get in touch with me. Thank you. Terrence Franklin. Terrence Franklin, I can't believe that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I put up a post on e-democracy today. I talked with Cindy Barrington, the police spokesman, 
And uh, there's information there on the timeline. They're probably not going to have a report for six weeks in tech here, what's going to be in there. I think the really relevant part of it is that uh, the medical examiner's report, according to state law, is not released if there is a homicide that is being investigated. It is not released to anyone, including next of kin. The uh, news conference last Thursday, the father said uh, that he had been shot in the back of the head five times. Oh my God, uh, what? There is a provision in state law that any person can request a court hearing to determine if releasing medical examiner information is in the public interest. That apparently is the only way that that medical examiner information could be released. So if anyone wants to do that, uh, again, the post is on eDemocracy. You might want to take a look at that. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Um, yeah. Um, I think that's all you, Dan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry. <laughs> um, the, the, the Duluth thing, um, ah, man. I lost it here. Oh wait, there it is. Sorry. Um, so in Duluth, there's a just a talk about sulfide mining um, going on. It's supported by Truth to Tell uh, KFAI Radio with Andy Driscoll. It's starting at 6 p.m. Um, they will be broadcasting live, so you can tune in uh, over on KFAI. Um, basically, a, a panel of people is talking about what the issues are with the mining up there up north, and so that's breaking that down. It'll be on local media. And what is it? That's uh, sorry. That's uh, on Wednesday, June twelfth, six to nine p.m. That should also be archived on KFAI's website after the fact to be able to play it back as an MP3. So, yep, that's all. There. I think I think the group Water Legacy is also involved in that. They've got a lot of good information on their website. And then now the Saturday. Uh, yeah, really quick, I just wanted to mention, because it's, it's popular with a lot of people, uh, Northern Spark is a nighttime uh, Nuit Blanche like art festival, and they moved it over to St. Paul only this year, and so our friend Tipsy Bike is going to get people at the Sabo Bridge over um, Hi Lake Hiawatha to meet up um, at uh, 6 p.m. They'll, they'll just basically sort of have a dance party over into St. Paul, so... It's a, it's a, you know, it's a big art festival, um, so. Hey, are you sure that the uh, Sable Bridge will hold up? Yeah, right. <laughs> They'll be under the Sabo Bridge. So it's, it's 6 p.m. Saturday. So this Saturday, 6 p.m., Lower Town, like Lower Town by the Farmer's Market. Yeah. 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 No. The Bill Murray one last year. Yeah, I know. Was in heads. Yeah. I was screaming my head off at Critical Mass to hear Yeah, totally. Cool. All right, so next one. Yeah, it's June, really, free market. That's this Saturday, 2 p.m. Uh, so June 8th at, um, from 11 to 3 p.m. at Chicago and 46th Street. The free market is from 2 to 4, possibly earlier. So that's like a free spot where people can just offer stuff that they have to give away, and other people just go there, get stuff for free. It's a regular thing. It's the really, really free market. So that's at, yeah, Chicago and 46th on Saturday afternoon. I always feel like people should make a clarification about the really, really not a capitalist free market. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, word, yes. the words free market are often associated with capitalism. This is not a capitalist free market. Bartering. Well, well put. Or okay. it's, it's free. It's not even barter. It's just like, what do you need? Sorry. Right. Can I throw a comment? Yeah. yeah. There's another one the same day. Really? Mm -hmm. Where? Sort of towards Calhoun, somewhere over that way. Really? I read it in a wedge newspaper or something. Huh. Okay. All right, next topic. Monday, McDavid. Yeah, th there's a concert for um, uh, Eric McDavid and Marie Mason, who are uh, two people that are imprisoned under what's called the Green Scare. And so that's at the Seward Cafe. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's next Monday. Um, it, it, it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, at, yeah, Seward Cafe, 8 p.m. Monday. Eric McDavid, Marie Mason, Solidarity, um, several like local bands are playing. So, um, yeah. Or no, wait, it's on June tenth. I'm so, they, they, yeah, Monday, June tenth, eight p.m. That's when it's on. Sorry. Yeah. So it's a benefit. Yeah, it's a benefit. Seward Cafe. Very cool. All right. So, Chuck, is this you? I just. Yeah. That, that was a report to continue on from the, the legislators. 
report, uh, there was legislation passed that requires utilities to get, it sounds like it's nothing, but one and a half percent of their uh, electrical output from solar. And that's to get them started. We, we have a, currently uh, another requirement that's been in place for a long time, longer time, and that's the percent they have to get from wind. And Minnesota is one of the five leading states in the production of electricity uh, from wind uh, energy. So now they've moved it a little bit in, into the solar arena. So it's uh, like Keith Ellison said, things weren't, weren't as good when we passed the legislation as they are now. So that'll be a case like that. Mm -hmm. <coughs> All right. Um, something update. Do you see? Oh, um, well, we've been waiting for the judge for his summary comments and mm -hmm. thought that he was going to be per perhaps presenting a, a recommendation to the commissioners as to whether to expand or capacity of the pipeline or not, but he is not going to do that. He just issued his rather cursory um, summary of comments with none of the sources. He just gave them his opinions. So none of the sources that people provided and documentation and the solid evidence will be going, as far as I know, directly to the commissioners. And uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Oh, they supposedly are going to come up with their answer, their big decision, sometime in the next 60 days. So I don't know if that means they'll do it at the end or if we'll get a big surprise in a few days. Well, yeah. All right. Media mm -hmm. committee covering events. Yeah, uh, that's fine. Uh, there were two events last week. Uh, one was the news conference for Karen Franklin's family, <coughs> and the second one was the protest the, the next day. And I just wanted to throw out as a suggestion that uh, it might be good if people can get information to the media committee as far in advance as possible uh, to see if anyone is able to cover these. And maybe we can take a look at the media committee getting some additional equipment so that anybody available to cover something like this as news would be able to do it. Sure. Um, I can direct response. I wanted to live stream that, but my phone was not functional at that time. But. I hear you. Um, people can email me at hongpong at hongpong.com. I think we're going to set up an intake form later on occupymn.org. We don't have one right now, but uh, yeah, just you know, email us. You know, shoot us Facebook, Twitter. We'll do what we can. Nick, yeah. and then Jared. Another I, thing is just transportation. Like, if yeah. you're going to an event, bringing somebody that has a camera with is an awesome thing to do, and then they can be shared all over. I was at the press conference. <laughs> about Terrence Franklin, and I recorded some of it because I had a camera from CAPD. Unfortunately, the batteries ran low before the end of it, so but I did capture some of it. Bring and extra batteries, too. Well, I did. I know. I'm the just extra saying. battery wasn't any good. It wasn't. Mm. I, 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 <laughs> I know. I know yeah. how that goes because many precious things have been lost mm -hmm. due to bad batteries. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I sympathize. Wow, that was the shortest time you've ever went through yeah, an announcement. Kind of in relation to that. Uh, there was the motorcycle that was killed at the intersection by police going to that event. And that's kind of tied in with something. They went through a red light. Yeah. <clears throat> Thirty minutes after. Yeah, at least. Huh? Thirty minutes after. At least. <laughs> All right. So report back. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to mention real fast. Um, like there's been a really large popular uprising in Turkey, which is definitely not like a CIA color revolution type thing. It's like a real deal. It appears to be, and um, so uh, I've been trying to help out do media support. Like we have. Uh, people that we've worked with in Turkey previously, and so we've helped kind of build up like live streaming and you know people doing live video and stuff. They've been trying to jam Twitter and Facebook, uh, you know, um, as well as a 
finding stuff like aid for translating, you know, tear gas help information and like opening alternate internet gateways and stuff like this. There's been a lot of really interesting things going on. And it's spurring uh, Occupy. Uh, there, there's a, a part called Gezi Part G E Z I, and so Occupy Gezi and, and similar like hashtags have really taken off. So I think it's really been aligned with Occupy. It also demonstrates to the Middle East that the real social conflict is not like the impending World War Three crap. It's like states repressing their citizens. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, uh, Turkey is just—it's a great example. It's sort of, you know, once again, the Middle East is kind of leading the way for you know social. Uh, uh, resistance and that kind of thing and uh, so it's hard to say where it goes in the next couple of weeks but it's real promising so I just wanted to call attention to that and it's definitely inspiring stuff so I was just going to say a lot of the stuff is going on from LiveLeak too yeah yeah LiveLeak that's LiveLeak.com the, the videos have been deleted from YouTube and so you can use certain things like uh, video download helper and keepvid.com to pull things off of YouTube because stuff's been disappearing. Mm -hmm. So that was another thing I had mentioned. Yeah. The other day I was in the BBC and they announced that one person had been killed and I mm -hmm. went, oh good grief. Mm -hmm. That is such a blatant lie, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, because I looked on the Facebook pages and, you know, there's been there's yeah. deaths over there. Really? Oh. <coughs> yeah. This was just a, a direct question you can ask. Can someone send you the uh, treatment stuff on how to cope with tear gas? Uh, yeah, we, we already found the, the old like anonymous guide and someone translated that, but if you have more material, I'm sure it might be helpful and I can, I can, if you got one, but if you're already, like they've used so much gas, they've used like CS gas, they've used like this mysterious orange gas, which people call by shorthand Agent Orange, although it's not really Agent Orange, that's been a little confusing, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but they've used a lot of different kinds of gas and it's contaminated everything in the neighborhood kind of, so... It's more than just like mass, like it's just sort of all over the place. So. I have a friend that I've known uh, since junior high that it lives in Istanbul, and so I, uh, I'm friends with her on Facebook, and uh, she gives a lot of reliable information uh, to me about what's happening in her neighborhood, and is able to verify a lot of things happening. I have not asked her yet, but I uh, wondered uh, if we could possibly have her do some interpretation of. Uh, some of the text coming out, if she could translate uh, mm -hmm. for us and, and things, uh, I think that she could probably do that. She's multilingual uh, and uh, teaches at the international school there. Uh, so uh, I post some of her things. Um, Jenna Pope, who came here and went up to cover Red Lake Blockade, mm -hmm. she's an Occupy Wall Street New York City uh, activist, uh, is in Istanbul. She just landed there. Um, yeah, she had some photos today. Yeah, she's going to cool. be covering that. So um, I hope you can just find her on Facebook. Uh, and she won't accept friend requests, but you can click the follow thing now because she's like at her maximum number of friends that she's going to accept it. But she has 3,000 followers and then you can follow her stream. And she has great pictures on there. She's a great photographer. Patricia? Yes. Mm. Oh, um, I would just want to kind of talk a little bit about Turkey and what was going on with that because I've been kind of following it too. And uh, a few days ago, well, they were live streaming it. Um, there was a couple of addresses on there, but I think because of the news blackout that's going on over there, they're really re relying on other people to get them access to live streaming so we can watch what's going on. And then... Um, the, the the one night that they were riding and everything blew out, the next night they took a bulldozer and drove a bulldozer down the street and to remove the police lines that were there. And so, yeah, and then yesterday the uh, some men who drive rigs um, blocked uh, block the police with their rigs with these huge semi-trucks. There was like three of them. So they did that. And then today... And then today, it's like this wonderful uprising. You just got to stay in tune with it. I mean, it's just like, it reminds me so much of Occupy Wall Street. They've got actually, you know, the, far, the, the park there that they had bulldozed down to build a mall. Um, that was the, one of the reasons that they said that, you know, there was an uprising there. But um, Jenna Pope took this picture where all of the protesters are growing a garden where they had mowed down all the trees. So they're all, you know, and then today it was really exciting because I seen this beautiful picture of all these medical students who volunteered their time to go to help the protesters from Turkey. 
So yeah, yeah. So all these medical students walked off, walked out of school, and went there. Like, and there had to be at least, I, you know, there was just a huge line of all these medical students that were going there to help the protesters who had gotten injured during the protests. And yes, there were more people that were killed than what's reported. Way more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, no, not that I know of. I know Zakati was in solidarity with them, though. No. You know, and, and there was a couple thousand people there just a couple yeah. days ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah but they, I, they, they were there on Saturday, but they didn't stay overnight. No, but yeah. there's a lot of Turkish people that came out. Okay. So, yeah. Um, now I, I know they're um, having to treat people in people's homes. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, well, um, mm -mm. someone called me up uh, to ask if, if I were going to occupy tonight, and if so, was there going to be organizing a solidarity rally with the, um, what was going on in Turkey, mm. and they were helping, so. Would well, be cool we if we had a Turkish community here? We Should we have had discussions? No. Yes. Yeah? Or yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do we have a Turkish community? All right. Not so, really. Yeah. How about one or two the report back? If we do, it's very small. Okay, um, off topic. Let's keep on report back. So we have the MNDBC. Uh, very briefly, uh, I'm, among other groups, participant with uh, the Minnesota Break the Bonds uh, Coalition, um, MNDBC, for a catchy acronym. And uh, there was an action today at the uh, Minnesota State Board of Investments, which, uh, for those that don't know, it sounds like an obscure group, but it's actually like the highest uh, leaders in the state. Uh, it's the governor, the secretary of state, the uh, attorney, state attorney, um, and the treasurer, I think. Um, and uh, so, we went there with placards this morning um, and uh, pretty much filled the space. There, it's interesting how there are certain spaces, public spaces, that get no attention, and this has been one of them. But uh, BBC has come in, and the reason they're there is because Minnesota is one of, uh, I can't remember the number, like 20 states that are invested, publicly invested in Israel bonds. These are bonds that directly support what I call the Zionist state of Israel. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, I, I, I think of Israel as a colonial project, an outright colonial project. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, the US is also a colonial project, but Israel is an explicit colonial project. Mm -hmm. So uh, Minnesota Break the Bonds is, is uh, trying to divest uh, from these bonds, and I can't remember the exact dollar amount, but it's millions of dollars of Minnesota money, state money, is going in support. So, and then EBC, uh, and then uh, I have the next report back as well, uh, pipeline field trip. Is, um, so, I think, Lion, you might be, uh, contact person in this group for folks going up to uh, the pipeline, uh, the Red really? Lake. Yeah. I'd be glad to. I don't have a car. I don't go there. But no, I, I thought you I had, you had volunteered to be like a point person. For that. I, I just want to say that there is a online organizational tool for folks that are interested in going up to Red Lake at the encampment. Um, this was organized via the um, meeting I went on the 22nd of last month um, where there was a coalition, uh, you know, informal coalition that met and they organized an online, um, it's through Doodle Poll, which I'm guessing someone like Dan probably is familiar with. I, I had never been familiar with it, but it's a way to, uh, you know, basically coordinate trips uh, and get uh, people carpooling and whatever. Um, you can go on uh, online and check boxes if you're interested in going up. Check when you're available. And if there are enough people that are available at a X time, then uh, a carpool will be organized. And I think it's 350, if I'm not mistaken, that's doing the organizing. Um, so uh, 
Yeah, and I don't have the link with me, but um, I'll probably send it to, I assume Polly will be willing to forward it out to this group mm -hmm. of people. I can get the link to it from Paul Densmore. Yeah, Paul Densmore. Can you just tell us what it is? I, I don't have it. Oh. Yeah. Sorry. Um, and can I sneak one more quick? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is to assuage my guilt. Uh, I did not participate in the National Call-In Day for Lynn Stewart. Uh, in case people don't know about Lynn Stewart, she's uh, been basically uh, extrajudicially imprisoned. I, I think it's, I'm not a lawyer, but it, it just seems incredible that uh, Lynn Stewart got like this 10 year sentence tacked on after she had already been sentenced because of a comment she made after she got sentenced, she made a comment to the effect of, you know, I can do that. And because it sounded too cocky for the judge, like, the judge, like, found out about it, came back and gave her an extra 10 years, right? Oh, I don't think they can do that, can they? It, 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 just, it just doesn't seem possible, but this is the man. Um, so we're dealing with a... Yeah, and we're dealing with the judge. Yes, wow. it is. That is crazy. Yeah, it, yeah, and so, I mean, this happened a while ago, right? But so she's been sitting in prison, and uh, at the same time, she's developed cancer. Oh, my God. That's so um, and sad. so, yeah, and so, like, Lynn Stewart's one of the people's, you know, there's lots of people's heroes. We talked about uh, Bradley Manning. Uh, Lynn Stewart's another person that's been mm. representing through the judicial system, representing uh, basically left activists uh, her entire career. Um, so anyway, uh, keep your eyes out for another like call-in day or whatever for Lynn Stewart. Um, yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, Thank you so much, Eric. Yeah, you're welcome. <coughs> Did you get your Jamie Kelly? Could I add a one point on that? They won't. Run the the prison system won't let her out, and she's in stage four of cancer. It's just total viciousness. Well, meanwhile, they let bank executives out for less than that. So you don't put them in. They don't put them in the right. yeah. yeah. really. Okay. All right, all right, I'm coming. Yeah. Um, okay, Robbie, open. Sure. Jamie Kelly. Yeah, you all know about Jamie Kelly, right? <coughs> right? Yeah, well, I don't uh, She's a woman whose house has been foreclosed by Jamie Morgan. Chase, it's been kicking around for quite a while. She had a hearing uh, one, one Monday ago. Uh, that particular action was dismissed actually by the, uh, by the plaintiff, that is, by the banking people, rep, lawyer. Uh, what I need to find out is what that means. Was whether well, whether the whole action is dismissed or just this part of it. It was an unlawful detainer hearing. <clears throat> the bank dropped it because the attorney general, was it Minnesota, had written yeah. a letter that said that she got another month before any action would be taken. Okay, so that's where it is. So we're, it ended we're this 30 UD. days and we're back in the camp. It certainly could be. In 30 days, they could file another unlawful detainer, which would lead to another court date, which would possibly lead to her eviction. Okay. So well, it was just a, totally a standoff consistent. for a month. And hopefully something will change between now and then. Mm -hmm. So, now that we're done with the court facts, um, we have a discussion topics. Um, first one that I have to put on there is the reaccusation. Like, second year <clears throat> annual anniversary does anyone have any ideas or maybe we can put out a date to have like a crew put together to talk about it okay. <laughs> can I get a drone to go with it <laughs> 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 yeah. um, kind of a model of a drone I'm going to say that it, it, obviously it sounds like you guys want to reoccupy the space that was down the plaza well it's a I, I was thinking more like Every year we could do a day event, an all-day event. 
just where you hang out in the plaza and kind of like piss off everybody. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm all for that. Okay. <laughs> I, I go out to the, that courthouse, by the way, as a guardian for my brother and piss off a lot of the judges all the time. So. <laughs> the problem is so, we yeah. can't afford potties anymore. Oh, they yeah. all know porta potties. Well, maybe yeah. we need to like they won't let us have them. They won't let us have the potties. The and it all comes down to whether or not you can go to the bathroom. Oh, let's stay in stack. Let's stay in stack. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Good job. See that pathway. CJ. CJ. Yeah, I think we should actually have the people's plaza. I mean, we talked about one of the problems was the lack of porta potties and so on. But all we have to do is get a van. I'll donate my van. I have a porta potty in it. We can use that. We can get other vans. <laughs> Good for I have, you. I have a rolling toilet. Yeah. So, rolling toilet. And also, we can, also the, the problem of, of staying on it, we can't camp on the plaza, but there's no law against having vans, RVs, those kind of things around the plaza where we can sleep at night, but we can be there, be there during the day with our signs and, and, and that kind of thing. So I think we should reoccupy the plaza in that fashion. Uh, uh, just briefly, the Hennepin County Board did approve authorizing having one porta potty there. 24-7, uh, and I was the one that pushed that resolution for, through, got four out of th uh, seven of the county board members to vote for it. So that is a provision uh, right now that they've approved, just for what it's worth. Very cool, we'll keep that in mind. Awesome. Um, um, two things. Um, there's a spot where you can actually have media vans on the plaza towards the grassy part of it. Grassy yes, there is. And uh, that's Specifically, like, you can park on the sidewalk, so you don't have to pay for parking. But that's an idea. And then um, there's actually that uh, booth open right now, selling concessions during the day. I'm guessing mostly during the lunch rush. So that might be a good way to put pressure on the city to, like, actually give people their civil liberties. Hey, I'm more militant than this group of friendly, because I think we should re- uh, we should reestablish ourselves and get in the news by by way of like actually urinating in their following. <laughs> <laughs> wow. L O L. Get okay. as many of us as possible to be arrested on scene. It makes a big splash. No pun intended. <laughs> 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 and then that way, and then that way, that's the way to kick off the celebration. I'm willing to go to jail for like pissing in public. Okay. <laughs> Off topic. <laughs> I'm breathless. I I forgot. I just I was so yeah. <laughs> Never mind. I want. Well, since the anniversary isn't until October seventh, you might want to be out there. This is my vision. At least once a week, maybe more, with all the things everybody's doing, and letting the world know. So we're reaching out and and trying to help people. Very cool, Bob. And I just want to let everybody know, I personally have been occupying People's Plaza campaign for mayor. Uh, I was approached by security in Hennepin County. They asked what I was doing. I told them, they said, stop it, don't do it. And I talked to the security guy for about two or three minutes, and he eventually ended up, after I explained to him that the Hennepin County Board has a policy on this, that I'm well within the policy, uh, he said, oh, okay, that's fine. And we had a pretty friendly conversation a couple days after. Now, here's the point. There is a Hennepin County policy in place on the use of the plaza. It allows us to be there 24-7. It allows us to pass out literature. You know, so uh, we need to get a copy of that and review it. But one of the achievements of the Occupy movement is to reclaim that public space. I personally am doing it. I think that we should continue to do it. It's important to maintain the public space. There's one guy that came up and... I started to offer to give somebody, he said, get away from me. That's when the guy came out, the uh, security guy, five minutes later, obviously this guy made a complaint. Well, we have a right to be there and to do these things uh, as a, a political expression, freedom of speech, the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. That's the First Amendment. I suggest we do it like family friendly as well. We have like kids friendly. Balloons. Balloons and Balloon clowns and whatnot. What's that one score where they um, weird? Jan. Again, I was uh, hoping we could have a day of disgust where everybody brings their issues downtown and we parade through City Hall because that's where 
all the well, a lot of the power is in the city. Um, and I don't think we've really done that. We've done it in sm you know, small areas, but one I, voice, please. I, I think to get everybody down there with their issues and you know, looking at each other and going, something's rotten in Denmark, you know, that, that the corruption is extremely deep down there. Um, hmm. And it needs to be revealed. It's every time I go, every time I sit in the courtroom I down there, the I am made aware that the that there's not very many judges who are sympathetic to human beings. They uh, take the side of the uh, oppressors constantly. So establishment, pretty establishment. Um, it seems like kind of on that same note, um, it might be a good opportunity to do outreach to people that are tied up in the legal system there. Mm -hmm. I know every day that court is full of people and. Go out there and talk to someone and be like, hey, uh, something stinks here. Let's do something about it. CJ? In addition, to Bob, in addition to Bob Carney, also Occupy Homes has been occupying the plaza from time to time in conjunction with demonstrations around, uh, around uh, Jamie, <coughs> Jamie's uh, eviction and so on. So we have been doing that from time to time. We need a lot more people out there to be, to be occupying the plaza and more frequently, and especially we should be doing it on October 7th. Um, an idea that Jan has reminded me of, and also that um, Nick had all brought up, um, about advocating for people who have been part of the, the injustice that goes on down there. Um, I actually did advocate for people who were on probation for drug abuse um, at, I think it's 1148. It's one of the most infamous courtrooms in the whole uh, courthouse. Um, it's used pretty much as a revolving door for a lot of people that are um, brought through the system arrested, re-arrested, and it's like, and they're made to basically pay uh, restitution for just about anything and everything. Um, the POs that basically sit there, like in a box that is off to the side of where the judges, um, actually make comments all the time, they laugh, they think it's a big joke that people are in it. And there have been some times when I made complaints, official complaints when I've been there. I've had friends of mine, I've had people that I know that um, have been staffed at Whole Community, um, temporary staff through a program that's um, former felons that basically work with um, the programs that we offer there. And they've been involved with this for like years at a time. I mean, sometimes it's been like as little as like a babysitting check that didn't get um, reported to welfare. And then of course they drug test the mother. And then of course it just snowballs from there. So I think one of the things that you can do because it's like anybody can go to that courtroom obviously, is that if we got like a whole bunch of people just to sit there and hang out there, for a day and act, you know, as kind of like the watchers of these disgusting human beings that sit off to the side that are POs. This is their job, mind you. This is what basically makes the world go around for them. And it's really kind of disgusting. I think if we had like just, you know, we used to have a thing called Court Watch. And in Court Watch, that's what I was introduced to. Um, my uh, uh, precinct basically had one out. Everyone has it. They have like these things called clean sheets. And they go through like these constant habitual people that need obviously help, you know, with their drug abuse problems or with domestic abuse and things like that. And they're just torn through the whole system over and over again. So I think that's really a good idea to basically do this occupying thing in situations like, uh, you know, getting back into the courthouse and getting in their face. So that's my two cents. How would we do a separate meeting from this? Can we maybe, my suggestion, which we did last week, was just everyone kind of went around and just talked about what they would like to see, and I think that, like, that kind of <coughs> moment of vision, people have addressed that a little bit, but I think it's a specific ask for everybody, like, yeah. like, you what, the table? like, yeah, if something like this happened, like, you know, not necessarily everyone has to answer, but, like, what would you personally like to see? Yeah. Danny, let's start with you, and then go clockwise. Uh, yeah, I, 
I guess I would say, well, the other thing, too, is that this turkey thing has, like, um, actually gotten people talking a little more about reoccupying, much as, like, Wisconsin and Egypt kind of set the stage for everything before. And so I think, like, uh, you know, being cognizant, bu building um, the sense of connection out to, to things like turkey, out to things like... Um, other areas where people are resisting, like uh, making that visible somehow that we stand in sympathy with people, I would like to see that. I like that idea. So, well, I'm all, always about occupying something. Um, <laughs> so, whether it's a street, a building, you know, but I think that the visibility um, of having occupied go back to the plaza whether it be to support Turkey, whether it be to support whatever issues that we need to support, we need to be visible again so that we let them know that we're still there and that we're still active and that we're not going away. Because one of the things that they depend upon is to shut us up and we cannot allow them to shut us up. You know, and that's one of their strategies. They, you know, we were an eyesore to them. Well, I think the message was more of an eyesore for them because we were exposing the truth. You know, and whenever we expose the truth, we become a target, especially for people who don't like to fucking tell the truth, you know. And that includes all of our politicians, judges, lawyers, prosecutors, attorneys, every, all of it. The whole system is bred in corruption, including the police department. It is totally bred. Police department. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, the, no, I mean, even the foundation of when the Minneapolis Police Department was founded, it was founded on corruption. You know, there was a bunch of gangsters who started. Um, uh, but anyway, the, the point is here, <laughs> the point is, <laughs> I think that it's very important that we're visible, you know, for whatever our causes, because many of us went down there with many different causes for many different reasons, and I think we can continue with that spirit. We're all representing different issues at different levels. Just make sure we have our signs. Housing. I'm going to do two later. Okay. So we're going around in circles? Yep. Mm -hmm. I actually would like to see us occupy the fireworks event in downtown Minneapolis on the 4th of July because uh, I think the rockets red glare Crap is all about war, and it is all about, you know, colonizing this country and uh, taking it over. And it is a highly visible <laughs> location, and I could totally see us with light brigade signs on the bridges mm -hmm. and um, having, you know, a real presence where we have a large number of people that are gathered in one place anyway. Uh, on a day when they're celebrating, and, you know, maybe put a different spin on their celebration. Um, have them think about what it is they're really, you know, they're really doing and celebrating. Um, I'd like to occupy the fireworks in downtown Minneapolis on Fourth of July. Good idea. Or powder one too. Or the Capitol. Nice. Or the State Fair. Let's let Eric. So uh, I like the idea, I guess, of going back to the People's oh. Plaza. After all, it is our plaza, NESPA, um, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yep. Um, yep. And uh, I like the idea of uh, sending out some positive message that will invite, so it will sort of serve as a recruiting tool for people to get reinvolved with Occupy and start coming to more meetings. Um, and it would be nice to also have a message of we're going to have a good summer, we're going to have a fun summer. Um, yeah, something that's positive. Mm -hmm. um, James Grazik informed me before that he'd like to see new Twister at the Plaza. <laughs> no, I saw a Twister game. That, oh, oh, sorry that you said new But I, I, I really like the macaroni and cheese. I don't know what kind of cheese they had it, but it was really delicious. I had some right. <laughs> okay, but off topic, off topic. Good food, good food. Um, the same thing that I had already said. I think that um, you know my experience in that courtroom um, pretty much says volumes to me about uh, the injustice that goes on on that very same property. So I'm going to stick to basically what I said before. <coughs> Having a whole bunch of us march in there and fill up every seat in that gallery at, uh, I think it's, uh, don't quote me, it's 1148, I think is the rule that it's notorious for just completely being a, um, uh, a little 
revolving door for the, the, this kind of nonsense. So, what, I have a question on that. Um, sure. Like, I don't know how those proceedings go there, but like, would it be inappropriate? I mean, obviously, we're gonna storm there, and you know, we're all gonna be present because it'll be so much fun to occupy that room that day, but yeah. um, would it be inappropriate? I think we should like have like some kind of symbol of some kind. So like every time they heckle, we can have a shame on you button wearing, you know, or, or watch, something, you know. red lapels or red. Um, That's a shame on you. Yeah. Or something yeah. like that, you There's know, something. <laughs> and, then you how, and they kind of that? direct it to them every time they heckle or some shit, you know. When I first started, I was on court watch, and it was to basically watch the judges. <laughs> and it was coming oh, from the sorry. police department. I'd go to these meetings at the police department at my precinct, and they'd have a clean sheet, and they'd say, well, we need to watch the judges uh, making sure that they keep these folks in jail. Well, the more I investigated that as a court watcher, what I realized is that there was another group of court watchers that were in there, and they're going, "Wait, these people have hardly done nothing, mm -hmm. you know, compared to like some of the stuff that we see on the news every day." So we want the judges to be able to give a, a, a decent amount of justice to those who deserve it, but to stop constantly like reorganizing the same crap with the same amount of people all the time, who obviously need other types of forms of help. They need uh, drug abuse prevention, they need more, you know. Mm. And psychiatric and assistance for those psychiatric who are Psychiatric assistance. Yeah, it's really kind of sad. I see, people like my brother there. There. Oh. I see people like my brother there, and so that's the reason why I picked that. So. Okay, thank you. Mm. Mm. Um, I would like to see shenanigans. Um, maybe, um, <laughs> some giraffes, um, possibly a goat, um, maybe a hot air balloon. Go <laughs> with this. And then the more fun they can have and like show people like that <laughs> on live stream, the more people are going to come down there. And the more can you live stream that court room? Yeah, please do. I think so. Um, yeah, I see lots of different good ideas that we can all go forward with, kind of in parallel. So I, I don't say this to be criticizing other people's great ideas, but here's something that's, that's been near and dear to my heart, and that is kind of what Patty was talking about. Just a presence there on the plaza, ideally every day, and passing <coughs> out info on the atrocities of the week, the atrocities of the month, your favorite scumbag politician from Monday. <laughs> <laughs> if we had a flyer for each one of these things, it'd be 40 million of them, but that would be good too. You know, just so, you know, like I, I keep saying, I live in this uh, senior high rise for broke seniors and mentally challenged people, and those people have been through it for years. They know, they know all about it. And I keep saying, when are you guys going to get back down in the plaza? Man, like, what happened? You all fold it up and die? So I think just to be there. Now, maybe, you know, or maybe this is an unknown thing. Surely we could have a card table down there. <laughs> I would love to play a card. Actually, we've told me no tables. Well, fuck off. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a possibility. Well, we can carry it. Off track, off track. Off track. Off track. Well, anyway. We're off track. Sorry. Hand up. I would personally like to see the bad assery to resume from two years ago. I've been kind of sad not to see it anymore every time I walk past you on the plaza. Looks good. I would also love to see the love in everybody's hearts again. And, mm -hmm. you know, just the old stuff. Oh, I forgot to say, I'm really sorry. Um, along with passing out flyers, I think we also have to give people cookies. Oh, what? We also have to give people cookies. People really like cookies, and if you give them cookies, they will love you. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. We can talk about that. I, uh... <laughs> My whole vision is um, you try to step up and get together um, a sense of civic responsibility, a realistic appraisal that if we don't do something, this world is just going down the tube.
choose when those feelings come together and then there's a concerted effort nationwide to squash you, you know, that anytime you talk Occupy, the Minneapolis and Hennepin County police departments start, you know, running their cameras and having their meetings and spending all this money to thwart you. You know, I, I would just like to figure out some way where we could occupy the plaza. I could say, okay, well, I'm going to take on a part-time job. I'm going to get down there like 15, 20 hours a week and do whatever I can to point out what's going wrong and ways that we can make things go right. Um, and people that can devote more time to it, you know, Minneapolis Parks and Rec can come out and help assist. You know, they can open the public buildings so there's bathrooms, you know, and they can install, you know, spend $50,000 and install some showers, you know, maybe open up half of the armory, you know, start using some of these public resources to enhance this natural outpouring of civic responsibility and activity. And, you know, I mean, I just, then, people would not be afraid they're going to get thrown in jail or they're going to, you know, have to deal with all kinds of unruly behavior. But they're going to be down there saying, geez, you know, we've come a long way in this world and we didn't see all this stuff coming. But you're right, it's really messed up. We've got to make some changes here, you know. I'm glad to see you <coughs> down here with your sleeves rolled up. How, you know, that's, that's the space I want to occupy. I don't want to fight with... Rahm Emanuel and Barack Obama and Charles Koch, you know, and it really pisses me off to see our cities, our local politicians join in on that side. You know, I mean, why wouldn't they open the doors and say, you want to occupy? You want to straighten out some stuff? Come on down, you know. As a matter of fact, we're going to have a big summer program with Parks and Rec. You know, we're hiring all kinds of extra people just to keep the food going. And, you know, we got everything's got to be clean. You know, and we're kind of we have a dishwashing trailer for you. You know, why why can't that happen? Anyway, go on. Sounds good. Well, I guess we need to make some and do our brainstorm about what we'd like to see. Have people who want to help organize it and decide about are we going to do food. Are we going to make it complicated? Are we going to make it simple? And just to throw it in, because you brought up about, in my mind, about homelessness, um, speaking to somebody who's a social worker for the Veterans Administration, we have 7,000 homeless vets here in um, the Twin Cities. Jeez. They don't have any bed for them. No, no, no bed for them. And the other 7,000 have some homeless shelter place to it's just God. Minneapolis or the whole it's city. Cities, yeah. Shoot. You said seven thousand. That's a space. I thought you said seventy. And all seven thousand. Seven thousand. Oh, yeah. I was That's just still you know, shocking. I mean, every shocking. time we talk about this, it's just so upsetting. It is upsetting. There are thirty-five hundred children on any given night that don't have a place to live. Say that again. In Minneapolis, thirty-five hundred children. Yeah, I'm sorry. On any given night are homeless. That's the last number that I heard. Happy birthday. So if we were pushing for something that, along with the court stuff, would be a really good thing. Again, do something. Push our city fathers and mothers. Well, I, I would go back to the, you know, carrying signs representing the, the things that we're objecting to. All of that. There is a lighter side of me that kind of likes that, that routine that we went into India did. Where they danced, they had a choreographed dance that they all did simultaneously, and it, it has a certain in-your-face quality that I like a lot. But. Hmm. You may not like this. Uh, I do have some concerns. Uh, first of all, again, now I've been occupying, I've been standing up right from the beginning for First Amendment rights. I think it is very important that whatever we do, we try to be constructive, we try not to offend people, 
These are some of my concerns. When the Occupy movement uh, was going originally, uh, you know, there were occupations in the street disrupting traffic. Uh, a lot of people were irritated by that. I don't think we need to do that to accomplish what we're trying to accomplish. So I would encourage everybody to think about how we can be constructive and how we can avoid unnecessarily alienating people. Can I just make a point? Bob, I, th I think we learned that right away and right after it happened, we just said, you know, you can't disrupt, you know, bus lines and ambulances. You know, if you're going to do a civil disobedience, it's got to attack the, you know, what you're attacking, not disrupt life of innocent bystanders. And there, besides that one incident that a small group of people did, I don't think we, I don't, I don't, I'm I haven't sure associated myself with anything that is just an offensive <coughs> to the Okay, um, well, basically what we're doing, Chuck? There was traffic. on endorsing what individual committees did. And one of the reasons, of course, is the consensus process. Uh, so I think it's a good idea that we try to avoid being a decision-making body. Uh, but I, I just you know, throw it out to encourage everybody to try to be constructive, to uh, avoid violence, to actively take a position against violence, uh, or anything unnecessary that's going to alienate people. That's all. Thank you. What I was saying before, um, we're talking about reoccupation plans. We're going around the table basically giving out our idea of what we'd like to see um, during the reoccupation, basically. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry I'm late. And uh, yeah, I mean, I sort of, as I said last time, I think we need to start out a little bit smaller and gain a toehold, a uh, space for ourselves before we <coughs> try to um, get a lot of people in a space where we're going to be pushed out of. But, other than that, um, and just a quick reaction to things that have been said, I don't think we've been that disruptive. And sometimes, um, you know, uh, somebody's had some signs, you know, constructing a new society, sorry for the inconvenience. But there is a sense like that. And I think to even discuss the question of violence or not is so irrelevant to anything that we've done or considered or contemplated doing yep. because at most people have been disruptive or a small amount of property damage. As I said before, you know, property does not feel pain, it does not feel um, fear. And that is so different from violence. And when we're in a society that is so incredibly violent every day right here in this city, through the police and through other means and evictions and all that kind of stuff, the real pain that people fear, for us to even be mentioning that in the context of things that we're thinking of doing, things that we're not doing, I think really um, cheapens the word. Yeah, and reduces our like critique of our society. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Just my thoughts. Um, I like the idea of a banner drop. I, I, uh, I like making banners. <laughs> I like that. Sorry, I'm, sorry, I'm like, no. I don't think you really need to see Yeah, I like it. I do need to. Okay. I, I don't, my, my voice does not project very well. Yeah, we can hear I know y'all want to hear me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I don't. Oh, all right, all right, all right, all right. One more, guys. Uh, so I'm really excited we're talking about reoccupying something again. Uh, that's, that's just uh, okay. fantastic. Um, I think um, that we, I want to bring, I want to bring the desperate parts of Occupy together again. Occupy Minneapolis, Occupy Home, mm -hmm. get ready. All these other groups, I think we should work, work together again so instead of, of working at odds. Uh, I've been occupying for uh, 25 years. Uh, the article here start to do it, you recognize me, but my picture's on here. Occupying a home uh, in South Minneapolis. Uh, one thing that inspired me was Tiananmen Square. Tiananmen Square, I think, was one of the first occupiers, as opposed to, say, Egypt or 
CJ, should I tell that to like MDOT? Because it's like they disrupt traffic all the time in the state. I'm going to tell them. You know? Well, I don't think there's anything wrong with disrupting traffic. If we have to get someplace, you know, if we're doing it for, but we're intentionally disrupting traffic, I'm against that. Uh, I think we have ready to, to use a boat. Uh, if we block the road, so what? You know, let's get there. But then let's, then let's uh, be, uh, not block them once we get there. Well, I would support a number of things, uh, but my criteria for any project is does it work? That does, does, does it make you feel good to do it? You know, people at churches do things for charity, and it makes them feel good. Does it? He's smiling. Uh, uh, but does it really help get rights as opposed to charity for people? Nothing. Um, in, for these kind of things, uh, I was at pre PV, I went there one day, and I went across the street to a restaurant, you know, sidewalk eaters. And I had those little things sook made, you know, what is occupied. And I went to every table, and I said, would you mind if I gave you this. And they'd read it, and it wasn't like they would disagree. They said, what is Occupy? We never had a significant presence in terms of our impact on the very large number of people that you've got to bring on board. You know, it made us feel good, or some of us feel good, or whatever. But in terms of did it work, it, it had its day. And somehow or another, there are other things that have to be found, coalitions that work together. Like during the, the state legislative session, we got things done. Occupy people were there. But Isaiah was there. A lot of other people, they got together and they filled the courtroom. You know, and they made a they made a presence, and they made a difference. So there's got to be a strategy that <coughs> works. Okay. All right, Theo. Theo. I want to see <clears throat> a mechanism in place for when there's. Um, a severe disagreement, a revolution mechanism among people in the, in the group when something, you know, when things go wrong, and, and they do, um, you know, maybe some sort of a... Mediation group? Mediation group. Bingo. That's already on the way. All right, and then um, I think that we, we should improve on our, uh, our organizational techniques, you know, um, <coughs> about what works and what doesn't, you know, like uh, the mechanics of Occupy. Does think, anybody, does, that, does everybody understand that? Yeah. yeah. I think Occupy just is Occupy. Yeah, I, 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 I'm not, what do you mean? I don't, I don't know what you mean by that. Like, I, I'm, I'm talking about like, um, you know, just, just trying to make the way that we do things more efficient. I'd like to see 
maybe some signs of what Susie was talking about, the homelessness of children and veterans, anybody in general. But I think that would be an eye-opener for a lot of people um, to get those statistics out. I'd also like to see uh, some positive, some answers uh, to our problems, uh, identifying problems. Uh, we have a city that uh, basically is going in the, wrong, in the opposite direction of what they should. Um, and we the people know this. For instance, right out here, have any of you tripped on those horrible, uh, you know, slabs, those cement slabs? I think they might be off by a quarter of an inch or something. You know, it's really dangerous out there. Mm -hmm. So Dave will be paying for, you know, to have these replaced. Um, uh, and there are cheaper, and more ecological ways to handle this, i.e. mud jacking. Uh, I don't know how that works, but I guess they remove dirt and, you know, it lowers the, you know. Um, what they do to the trees is they, they uh, cut, you know, the roots so that the tree is, you know, off balance and, and if, when the winds come up like they, uh, they do, then we lose trees. Um, the stuff just don't make no sense. And uh, there's so many areas in which I think people would, out, you know, the general public would agree that the city is really wasting a lot of money and we need to not only complain and point out how it's wrong, but also show how we can do it better and this is coming to you from us, not from the people who are supposed to know what they're doing, who apparently don't. So anyway, I, you know, so I, I want to keep it positive, but I also want to educate. To, and, and I also would like, I would like to have some doo-wop singers down there. I think that would really be fun. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be cool, you know. And, and maybe have some kids come in and do some like that double dutch. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. oh, jump rope. Thing. Jump rope. That, that's really cool to watch. And just have some fun, you know, fun things for people to watch. And uh, and cookies are good. <laughs> right on. Yeah, I like cookies. I'll bring my double dutch rope. Cool. <laughs> All right. Cool. All right, Do you really have one? No, you don't. <laughs> um, I think it. I'd like to see there being some sort of ask or action. Um, there, I know there's been like bank transfer things and that sort of thing, but um, maybe developing the infrastructure to do that on a, on a mobile scale, and that way we can have a, a metric of some sort of impact of what we're actually doing um, or how effective uh, the day has been, I guess. Um, ever since somebody said you can't have tables down there, my mind has just been going wild. <laughs> Number one, why don't we have domino tables down there? Why isn't it a place where people go and play checkers or old men sit around playing dominoes and Or chess. Dominoes? Chess. Why yeah. not, and chess. chess. Yeah. Why not human tables? Here's <laughs> <laughs> my own idea. I'll be a human table. I think we should make it, try to get tables out there that are winterized and made of heavy this or that that can last through our winters and you come back in the spring and you clean them off and people show up and start playing games again. Yep. But my other thought is that you could have some sort of apparatus where you have a table at your waist oh, yeah. and then... <laughs> like Dan did with yeah, his little... <laughs> <laughs> and then you got your papers, you got your anti-war, your anti-drone, your anti-this and your anti-that available. And then you can also sit down, don't, don't make that you can't sit down, yeah. and that becomes a table. Yeah, well then you got your table, and then you get to back up and you walk around, but you got your information. I also think we should have uh, short, just to the waist, uh -huh. maybe for taller people, longer. But <laughs> Fashion show. <laughs> well, no, but like sandwich boards only to the waist so you can sit down. Unless it's like cloth at the bottom. Does anybody remember Max Headroom? You can do like a whole TV. But you don't want to get too. No, 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 no. Okay, 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 okay. Here's the thought. Just, just because I haven't been sitting here for a half hour thinking. Um, She's the best idea. But also, you can't get too extreme where they say you, you don't, you can't have some big puppet head, then they'll make a fuss over it. Yeah. So it's only within your own body space. Yeah. With the ability to sit down and stand up, and then you also can maybe have your table be a checkerboard so that you can clear off your important papers and have a game of something. Or you can eat your lunch. Yeah, yeah sounds good. exactly. Sure. Sounds, sounds fun. Okay.
Um, I heard about his pledge, and it's like, and I've heard about this thing that uh, Steve Allison did. He's my representative. Yeah. Um, I've supported him the last two elections. And I've also supported Al Franken. Um, what I've heard that might actually help create a wedge with your issue is that Al Franken is going to be, um, he's going to have somebody uh, go against him this year. And so I think, and I'm pretty close to their family, so I've talked to them uh, quite a lot about pledges and about mm -hmm. sponsorship or other things in the, in the Senate. So maybe I can like drum up some email um, problem or you know problem solving for that, <coughs> and then get that going for them, and then maybe that might actually do something with the house in terms of keep out. So that's the way I'm willing to help nice. on, on that. Sure. Susie. Oh, well, it's just I really wasn't thinking. I didn't come prepared to um, talk about it. I'm interested mm -hmm. in so many issues, and many of us here are working in different areas. So, <coughs> But the thing that has got me the most worried on the worry list is the TPP, and before that, the fast track that has to be passed this summer that Obama's planning on getting through that gives him the right to sign that TPP. And that will uh, abrogate any sovereign rights that we have in any <coughs> municipality, county, state, or nation, be cut, period, because they can blackmail anybody right. economically. Oh, sorry. So, well, it's well, not a if, different subject. Could I respond to, to what same, she said? It's the same <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. This is that this is a, a focus that I have been wanting us to address. That's what I. You know, okay, what we'll I put that on the discussion <clears throat> after everything else. How's okay. that? If we have time. Okay. This is important, though. It is. Yeah. That's I why. Agree. I mean, I think what, what she was trying. I'm going to get yeah. her up. I think what she's trying to say is that you know she said to focus the thing the thing that we should focus on that he was talking yeah. about and that mm -hmm. we can those are two of the same things in yep. in many ways. Yeah. That's the yeah, same. That's what I was getting yeah. I, I think the object of Occupy is to pull all these frayed threads of our society and say, look, you know, you think this is <laughs> we're we're not going to wear this forever. You know, we got to make this work right. Um, I, I've supported move to amend, but I, I really think that it's only, I think you have to have public funded elections, and I think that they should be brief, they should be educational, <coughs> voting should be mandatory. This, this idea that they don't allow felons to vote is just, you know, patently absurd. It's like, hey, you want to, here, you, you know who they are, they're in jail, you know, you can give them one ballot, they don't have any more ballots, I mean, they're the safest vote that there is. <laughs> you know, so everything that we do about electioneering is just perverse, and so that would be um, that would be offensive because people would just wouldn't recognize, you know, educational campaigns, brief, transparent, accountable, and no money. expressing view, which I think has a lot of merit. Um, I just wanted to kind of react to one thing you said about Occupy kind of only being a social thing like yeah. right now. And like for me, I'm really big into building movement. Mm -hmm. Like the more I have experience, the more I feel like we're kind of going to get everything or we're just going to get the shaft. That's kind of how I feel things are going. And obviously the shaft is winning at the moment. Um, but uh, I still am dreaming about everything. And so uh, 
the idea that we're getting together and expressing our world views and our various, mm -hmm. you know, in very, uh, um, you know, unique ways um, is not such a bad thing. I think uh, a lot of us through this process, and sometimes it's not a good experience, but a lot of times it is where people are getting to know each other. Um, like I noticed just earlier, Dave Bicking had a really eloquent way of responding to a comment about violence. You know, and, and I know he's, he's articulate and everything, but I didn't know he had that uh, in his repertoire. So I mean, there's, there's, <laughs> there's, a, there's all sorts of things that are going on here. It doesn't, doesn't necessarily appear right away like we're accomplishing things. And, and this is where I think, if I can just step back and just like, we've, we've had a lot of comments over these meetings about Occupy Homes, and I know some people have just a lot of deep respect for what they've been doing. Um, and I just wanna say that, you know, in the end, what we're doing in terms of kind of building trust with each other, you know, in the end, it's about trust. Yeah. How, much, how much we can trust each other. Uh, because when we trust each other, we're gonna get things done. I'm not sure what that thing is or those things are, but we're going to work together. Mm -hmm. Bob, so, oh, so sorry. for me, uh, I just wanted to say that, like, I think we are doing things, even though it's not necessarily yeah. obvious. Yeah. 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 And we have one more. Um, okay. Sorry. Uh, on the uh, move to amend the constitutional route, you know, first of all, we need a two thirds majority, both houses of Congress, but uh, it does not say. Uh, a majority uh, has to approve in state legislatures of 37 states or conventions, but it doesn't say which has to happen first. It is a lot easier to get majorities in legislatures to approve the text of a constitutional amendment than it is to get two-thirds of Congress to do something constructive on that. So one way to approach this is to launch this at the state level, get 10 or 15 states to get on board, and then go to Congress and say, you know, it's obvious there's a lot of public support for this thing. You better get this, your two-thirds majority, or you're out of there. <laughs> and the first amendment that we should do is an amendment that allows that kind of a process to explicitly be initiated at the states. Congress is the bottleneck, but that is one way to get around it. All right, that's the interesting. end of that. Oh. Oh, well, I was just going to say to wrap it up and try to develop like a spin off group idea for this or whatever. Um, also, I would add, like, we did actually have some significant accomplishments. We were able to hold off an or ordinance at the city level that would have made it impossible for indigent and houseless people to even be on Nicollet Mall or the, the various plazas. Like, and I think that's even still on their agenda, like held or whatever. Isn't it still on the list? It's a postponed item, but they won't remove it from the agenda. Yeah, right. But we were, we were able to... So we were able to pull a block there, and that was actually really important. We didn't want to see homeless people get hurt, you know? And like that, I think, is actually a serious achievement. And I think we also slowed down the stadium deal at the city level. That was pretty clear. They were explicit that all the people camping out like, <clears throat> were making them think twice about the merits of this stupid deal. Couldn't prevail, but did like, kick it down a little bit. So, mm -hmm. And, and the, also the DRE thing, like getting that on the radar, unethical <laughs> drug stuff. So there's been no, a number of different little things like at the city <clears throat> level that actually were like, you know, happened. So I just want to raise that. Yeah, Jan. Uh, if I could. Um, Jan. Let's go to Jan first. Yeah. Um, I still think we should resist the stadium. I really do. Yeah. I, I really think that Occupy, that would be a great thing for Occupy to do. Because, damn it, until that, you know, until they rip down the Metrodome, we need to fight it in every way. We need to educate people, as, as Dave said, uh, tearing down the Metrodome would undo every green thing the city has done you know, for time immemorial. Uh, it's a huge amount of stuff to put in landfill. It's a huge amount of uh, <coughs> energy to, to just demolish and remove all that stuff. And then, you know, we don't deserve this. We should fight it until the absolute end. And <coughs> Occupy could lead that, I think. There's actually, um, like I was mentioning before, the downtown tax um, will go up. Well, yeah. It's, I mean, when I worked at Subway, it was horrendous that the students there would come in and be like, oh, why are your prices so higher than all the other prices in different Subways? I'm like, 
Oh, because we have this thing, wonderful thing called the downtown tax. So if that goes up, it's downtown tax. There's going to be people paying up the wooza for more stuff. Yeah. yeah. Did you want to? Yeah, yeah. Uh, We're going to end with Nathan. So um, I just wanted to mention a technical thing. Like we can, um, we mentioned doodles earlier for scheduling another thing. And so um, Loki had suggested making like a spinoff kind of group, like getting try to get folks together to talk about the specifics. Like, can we make a wearable table? Like, should we maybe make a few, a few flyers? Bring back the Dan for yeah. the the courthouse, all that stuff. So um, so basically. What Doodle lets you do is it lets you sort of mark out like calendar times and then everyone just sort of votes for which times they're available for. It's specifically a scheduling like check off thing. So maybe what we could do to, to advance this um, is to say, okay, we're gonna have a Doodle, like Polly will put it out and email it to everybody, we'll throw it out there on social media, and then in the next couple of weeks people can just, you know, check off these are the times that work for me and whichever times have the most that are people are interested then that's when we would have the meetings. And that's a way that we can sort of crowdsource the scheduling, which is incredibly difficult. Um, so that was my suggestion. And I think we can, do we all feel comfortable with that as an idea for scheduling yeah. some kind of spinoff? Mm -hmm. Are we feeling good about that? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, so. Call it polydoodle do? Polydoodle do. That's the yeah. maneuver. Yeah. The poly maneuver. Just the point, the my brother is like part of Interact, which is an art mm -hmm. studio. And so he has access to like places where you can do workshops. Nice. We do all this kind of stuff to do your setup work. That's cool, great. Cool. We did it for the May Day Parade. We did it for other things as well. Cool. That's all fantastic. Right, so, well, next topic, cops. Cops. Who put that up there? Ooh, really? <coughs> Who did that up there? After the pandemic was occupied, the was viciously criticized, both personally and as an organization. I made a people attempt to defend them by coming here and answering some questions about them, as much as I could find out, and by passing out some literature. And after passing out some literature that people disagreed with, I was accused of, what, me before last, of being a cop. Uh, Michael Kavanaugh also claims he was accused of being a cop recently. So, while I'm not willing to uh, confess right yet, I do think that those people that are uh, care uh, it's on live stream. So anyway, uh, I think she said informant. She said informant. She was cop. Anyway, uh, no, what I like to do is, I mean, I, what I think is that people are accused of being cops should be investigated. There have been cops. I've been wrong. Oh. Case, but for, I've, been wrong cops? I've been wrong the <laughs> I've, I've been wrong the movement for 50 years. There were cops in the, in the organization that were, that were uh, organized against the food clubs. I was involved with Rabble, Revolution Anderson's bowling, bowling League, when they took over this, this house. Here. <coughs> there were cops in that organization. So you get credentials to get hired by Now then, so I think that people that are accused of being cops should be investigated. I should be investigated. Those who are accused should be investigated because cops often accuse other people of being cops. That's what cops do. We're not cops. Okay, so... Yeah, so, so I, I would like I would like to see I would like to see uh, that investigation go forward. I'm willing to cooperate with it 100 percent and uh, um, see where it goes. Okay. Um, um, well, as a breakfast. Hold on, hold on. We have to start. Go ahead. <clears throat> uh, although I pardon me, resist that sort of thing. After the Monsanto rally in St. Paul a couple weeks ago. I read, I don't know how I went, managed to go through everything from the IATP. And <laughs> you guys put out about that much literature. Yeah. In the next couple of days, I was sick, so I was just like, through it. And they had a bunch of stuff in there about people that were, you know, we're at a state where we have to be careful. And it's, it is going to become an issue. 
and how we deal with it. I mean, I like the idea of checking people out, but maybe we have to do that. We do live in a police state, and I don't know if we do have a cop. Were you done, Joe? Were you done? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. yeah. The Chuck line. Um, I, for one, used to be a breakfast cook, and I used to like cook bacon all the time. Trust me, I could smell a cop in this. I'm just saying. I know. I don't feel like. Okay. Okay. Nick. I don't know why I thought of this. I'm gonna shower. Sure, is go get an application for the post office and fill it out. And if anyone wants to dox you, they'll have everything they need right there. Okay. Um, Jan. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what's up with Occupy Homes. I do know this that it seems like the little thing that they pulled the other day was very undemocratic. And actually, I don't quite understand their investment in in making us do what they want us to do. And it, as far as um, infiltrators. I think we really need to, to be on, on guard for that, but I also think we need to be on guard for people that waste a fuck of a lot of our time. Yeah, this you is know? true. I mean, I'm sorry, we are, we are very important things to do here. And I believe that Occupy uh, Minneapolis has, or Minnesota, or whatever you want to call us, but, uh, Occupy Minneapolis has expressed the desire to, has dis expressed, <coughs> should I say, a mistrust of Occupy Homes, and Occupy Homes has not been helping that image by coming here every week and then, you know, doing what they've done. It, we uh, apparently there. Once you break a trust with with a person, it's very difficult to get that back, and it seems that's what's happened. And uh, it's like it feels like somebody's trying to put a square into a you know round hole. It just doesn't. It's not going to work. You know, sure. it's just not going to fit. I am ending stack with two people because this discussion is ridiculous, for one thing. So we have Gillette and then Susie, and then we're done. Yeah. Okay, Susie. <laughs> I just don't, yeah, just, I don't want to see us go no. down. <laughs> Road is suspecting everybody and checking everybody out. And yes, we, if somebody is obviously, you know, you see them texting the local police station about us. There are going to be people in our movement who are doing this. They're everywhere. That's what our tax dollars are going for. So, anyway, but we okay. shouldn't be living that way. You should just assume everything you say is going to be heard by Okay. Okay. Yeah. Done. Done. So let's go. Okay. We have medic training next. We are done. Next. And more importantly, medic training. Where is Lion? Oh, is she? Hiding. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have your hat on. Are I'm you so, uh, like, stalking? Oh, Stop. No more. Okay. Cheap imitation. <clears throat> <laughs> Gypsy. 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 Okay, medic training. Anyways, um, this is going to be really short unless anybody else has anything they want to say. But I'm really heartened to hear everybody with all these great ideas about getting out in public in terms of the reoccupation. And this just underlines the need for us to have more street medics because stuff is going to happen and we're going to need street medics. So does anybody need me, want me, to go over again what a street medic is and what we do and all that good stuff? Or does anybody figure they have a good handle on it? We covered it just before, but if you want to mention that the, the training's coming up. What's the date? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Where is that? The date. Okay. The date is July 12, 13, and 14. Now, I'm pretty sure, let me have a look. I think July the 12th is a Friday. Should be. Is that right? Friday. Yes, it is. Now, the training is going to be led by Awesome Cat, who had the cutest baby <laughs> in the world a while ago. Uh, what she's always done in the past, so I assume she'll do it the same way. Training is 20 hours altogether, and usually we don't really go 20 hours. But anyway, usually she runs like Friday in the late afternoon and it's into the evening so that people can go to Friday for four hours and then Saturday and Sunday for the, the day. Um, you go to Xcode TC 
Dot org. Dot org. Is yeah. that written up there so everybody yep. can see it? <clears throat> yeah. Experimental colors at Twin Cities dot org. Go to that site and sign up for this street medic class and she needs <laughs> <laughs> Please, if you want to be a street medic or you're thinking about it, go to the site, sign up to take the class because she needs some people to actually get on the site and sign up to take the class so she can move ahead with booking the site. So that's what you've got to do. And I hear even more people talking about wanting to do it today. It's a great opportunity to be of service. I was amazed on the plaza about all the people I ran across who had chronic medical problems, too, who were not being served at all, and, you know. Mm -hmm. I was able to help them out also, and if somebody gets bashed or smashed or has a nosebleed, you know, you can provide medical care in a way that a lot of people feel safer about than going to the man. There's a lot of that kind of issue, too. So <coughs> please go and sign up. Do it now. She needs okay. Help. Five or six people for <clears throat> sure to sign up. Uh, you don't need any previous medical experience. You can't be. You just need to be badass. Huh? <laughs> you just need to be badass. <laughs> and you have to not faint at the sight of blood. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. All right. I should do that. And uh, <laughs> yes, we do also give out condoms. <laughs> we all know how that much helped on the plaza. Oh, the morning after film. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a sexy street. Just a couple of balloons. We all have them because it's part of preventing STDs, you know. It's yep. healthy prevention. Okay. <laughs> Anybody else have any other comments or uh, questions to go work, on? You know? Medic training? <laughs> no, yes. Okay, onward. Uh, Sign up. I'm going to keep kicking your butts every week. Okay. All right. Nice. Cool. Thank you. Uh, oh, we food. have a new food committee um, for the Wednesday night meeting. Um, we have a new cook. Everyone welcome. Because Polly is completely dead and she's done. Well, she's like, she helped out like with the last, the first time that I was here introduced into the kitchen. Um, I just want to say with the group that there's been a lot of discussion and Polly has actually been quite wordy on her emails, <laughs> considering uh, catching me up on everything that goes on here. I guess there was a Kathy that was here before that was quite legendary mm -hmm. uh, as a cook. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing that I really want to kind of break down for discussion, because I know this is a, a wide-ranging type of interesting thing to talk about, mm -hmm. but really uh, the specific three things that I want to discuss is obviously we're going to have a core group of people that will be on a committee for the food and that's not going to be too organized i want to just keep it to a situation where we're planning for food i think Polly liked the fact that when i was bringing my experience as a chef of 17 years <coughs> is that i can like create quality food at a low price i've gone through like what we have in the kitchen and my first concern is this we have a lot of stuff that's been sitting around for a considerable amount of time Jan has brought up the concern that um, people bring a lot of stuff into the kitchen, they don't mark it, they don't date it, and uh, Lion, I think the last time when we were cooking and everything, was going through some of this product and finding out that some of it had been here since 2009, yeah. you know, and it's like, so we don't want that to get into <laughs> our systems. So that was the first thing that I did, is I started marking off a list of things like, get rid of this, get rid of this, get rid of this. Um, the city has actually been coming down on David already, about having a food plan. I've been a part of that in that experience before in terms of like when you have a catering kitchen or whatever. And I brought up a couple of new ideas. One thing that I would bring <laughs> up in this discussion because David is here, is that there is a way to create what they call a non-licensed uh, commercial kitchen, which gets you off from a lot of crap, okay? Mm -hmm. The city gets off your back so as soon as they start to figure out that you're not making any money and that you're not a tax bracket for them. Boy, do they just like, they go, okay, sure. <laughs> Open up the kitchen, serve the homeless with it, have it as a soup kitchen. But then you do have to still have a food plan, and it has to be available for them to inspect. Can you tell us what a food plan is? A food plan is just a basic idea of like, 
of a business plan, like the, like you would create a business plan for a kitchen. Only the food plan is just like, how are you going to store your food? Are you going to be able to like um, feed people like on a 24 hour basis, as opposed to like maybe certain times during the day, the evening or what have you. Now we're skirting a lot of like regulations and laws by c creating what we would call ourselves as a soup kitchen. This is a mass gathering. It qualifies legally as a soup kitchen in terms of like basically serving food out of this kitchen um, to a mass of people. It's kind of like the same thing as a church group. Um, you don't have to file for a specific license to be a nonprofit. You don't have to do any of that kind of stuff. You just have to tell them that we're serving food out of this kitchen. Uh, the hot is kept at hot, the cold is kept at cold, so on and so forth. It's a very simple food plan and anybody can, can develop it. And I would probably sit down with you, David, since this is your property and go through that food plan. And I have found a lot of links that I can send your way to let you know how easy it is to like do that. Now, so my main concern on, that, on this particular section is please, if you're gonna bring your own food here, take it home with you the same night. Okay, because that creates a lot less confusion in terms of what's being stored in that kitchen and who it belongs to because there are, I think, two other groups that come to this kitchen every week and use it. And so they're going to be like leaving some stuff behind as well. So we wanted to get the word around to them as well as the Swedish group or the Norwegian group Norwegian. or whatever. Okay. Uh, yeah, the Norwegians do not leave anything. They uh, oh, okay. I didn't know if they did or not. Yeah, I love Norwegians. I love the way they cook. There's nothing against them. I see all uh, sorts of weird stuff in the kitchen. Now, not the test is too much. Okay, so that section right there, I wanted just as an announcement. If anybody has anything to throw for discussion, fine. Mary. I want to say that we got to go this Wednesday night deal is a potluck. Okay. And would anyone like to tell me what a potluck Ooh. is? <laughs> oh, okay. Mary brings up a very point. That was the, the second section that I'm bringing up. And yes, I'm glad that Mary reminded me. Um, this is going to be a potluck thing. I'm not going to come here and cook like a four or five course meal for 15 to 20 people every week. That's the reason why Kathy burned out. That's probably the reason why Polly um, burned out. And so that was the second concern that I was hearing is that people are not organizing themselves around the idea of like what this is, is a social group. And so it should have social food setting, meaning that you know you organize yourself. And so what I'm going to start off as an organizational skill is just a simple sign-up sheet. You know, each week you say, okay, I'm going to bring you know my uh, slutty brownies. I'm going to bring my <laughs> soup. I'm going to bring this, you know, whatever it is. And then we can like kind of dice that up in terms of the the, the four food groups that you want to have at each sure. social gathering. Okay, so. But if you don't sign up, you can still bring spontaneously. <laughs> don't forget, it's called a potluck, which means it's hit or miss. So <laughs> go ahead. Okay, now, Mary, Mary that's probably that's fine, but here's what I would say. Here's what I would say <coughs> in terms of like being the person who's seen what's going on in the kitchen. If anybody <clears throat> brings anything and everything, what you're going to have is a lot of like, you know, somebody will bring like tons of this, and then there's leftovers that have to be dealt with. So I like to say wait's not want not. So I'd rather know exactly what's coming for each Wednesday. And it's not too hard to say, you know what? If it's a last minute thing, like somebody forgot to bring buns and, and rolls or whatever, that's fine, because that'll keep. But if somebody's saying, well, I'm bringing a souffle at the last minute, then it's like, I'm going, okay, well, what do I do with the souffle? Um, it's hard to store stuff in there. There's only one refrigerator in there. I, I'm just saying. I, I know, but uh, my opinion is we just have to contribute and we have to be a little less than organized because we are well, and accept We have been a lot less organized. I think that's All right, let's keep on stack here. Yeah. Um, so, I think Lion. 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 Let's do Lion first. I just wanted to reiterate if, if people bring home what they bring, then oh, okay, they can be spontaneous and just be responsible after you're spontaneous. Good point. I agree. Lion. <laughs> And you can get condoms from her. Lion. One boy, please. Thank you, Loki. What I would like, a big change I'd like to see in food preparation in the kitchen, but I know you're a thousand percent with me on this, is some sort of reasonably safe food handling practices, which is not the same as what you do at home. It is not the same. Specifically, I'd like to see gloves for when people are handling food that is not going to then 
Do you subsequently cook before serving? I'd like to see any food, with all due respect, if you bring it, take it home. Yeah. But for food like, say, that there's cooked here, I'd like to see that food with a date on it before it goes into the refrigerator. Yeah. Some yeah. things last longer than others. I'd like GMO. To see some, I'd, like, I'd like to see some respectable food storage containers. And on and on and you know you know exactly what I'm talking about. We've yeah. got to pull our socks up before somebody gets sick around here. Yeah. Um. What I would say about what she just talked about in terms of like bringing your own food, and if you take it away, that's fine. Um, but please also know that um, as a soup kitchen, when you organize your food plan uh, according to that, there are stipulations as to like what you can do. Um, for instance, they want you to state towards more like soups, casseroles, things that are a mixture that can be kept at, at all hot temperature, as opposed to like individual type items like bringing burgers slices of pizza, those are the things that the health department would crawl upon. So when we have an inspection, which eventually we will, oh God. those are the things that you want to miss be know in the future that you can't bring on a constant basis. And then have the health department storm in here and see something not being stored properly. So that's the only reason why I say it's more organized if I know a plan of what people are bringing in the sign up list. If you bring something last minute, just make sure it's stored properly. That's okay. all I care about. All right, Eric. Well, I just had a question, I guess, uh, and I don't know if this has been talked about in advance or not, but um, do we have, like, the ability to store stuff here for the next week? Like, is there a section of the refrigerator that's sectioned off for Occupy? I mean, I know there are other, other groups that use this space, so I was just wondering, like, what the parameters are for Occupy. <coughs> Well, I kind of had this idea since I just like took everything in from everybody. Um, if we're going to do potluck, um, put your name on it. Um, if you want to cook it here, prep it first at home. Um, then cook it here if it's a warm dish or something like that. Um, on top of that, you know, with your own like pots and pans, you know, if it's empty, clean it, bring it home. Um, if you want to leave something here, Put a name on it, and then put it in the fridge. From what I've learned, that that's okay to do and that. It's got a date. And, and a date, and a date. Um, yeah, be if, cause I know I've helped Kathy with like frozen pizzas, and we've left them in the freezer, and they've been there for like, you know, like a month or so, and they're still good, and they had a date on it. Um, I suggest not leaving food that was made already, just bring it home. And fingered and everything else, you know, like a <laughs> We don't want to okay. need it with the flour. Okay. The people put their, their hands in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to keep that stuff around here because if the health firm comes in and checks it, it they're so, going to say it, you know. That's all I'm saying. Basically, bottom line, take care of what you bring. Now, can I help answer his question quickly? Yep, go ahead. Because what I noticed in there is that there's a lot of storage capacity in there, believe it or not. It's just so disorganized because of several different people. What I found for as an example, there's like 18 different types of like containers of coffee in there. That's like, that just like sends me into like a ballistic, you know, thing. I, mean, I, I you know, in my own house, I have like one container of coffee open at a time. Because coffee goes bad after like mm -hmm. a week and a half. It does. It's, you know, it, it's stale. It's like, and I don't want to drink it. So it's things like that. When you have like, you know, multitudes or multitudes of like the same item open, that's a disorganization problem. So I think there is like enough room in there um, for like the Occupy stuff and then to try to utilize, and the only thing I would also say about that is that utilizing what we have on hand is important because what Polly is telling me is that she's gonna pay for everything that I have on, on receipts that I have so far. Now roughly I have about 50 to $60 worth of items so far. And I'm not gonna ask for that demand it right away or anything like that. I know that there's a lot of cash on hand, but what we have is a waste situation going on right now. We've got a ton of dry stuff that can be used. Tosses and sauces. I mean, hello, you could be doing that every single week. We were. So that, yeah. Well, okay, but it hasn't been done in terms of like what I see on the dates. I see a lot of old pasta there that's been sitting there for a while. So that's all I'm saying. But um, yeah, to answer your question, I think we can control it where we can organize you know, our stuff, the Norwegians, and whoever else. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I feel like I'm saying like the Norwegians. 
the gate. The there's the okay. the Norwegian occupier. All right, all right, stack, stack, stack. Jan. Jan, Jan, Jan. Chuck. Jan. No, Jan, go. Yeah, um, about, about coffee. <laughs> this is something that's kind of pet peeve. Um, I prefer that uh, if you have leftover coffee that somebody take it with them and not leave it in the refrigerator. Um, I also would like people to d dispose of coffee grounds in the compost. Um, and, you know, I, I understand that people who love their coffee are, you know, they're fairly addicted to it, but um, I am <laughs> cleaning it out of the, <laughs> cleaning, you know, coffee grounds. I have to go through the garbage myself and sort stuff, and it's really irritating. Um, and, you know, it's it's very nice of coffee drinkers to be considerate to each other and say, oh, well, maybe somebody likes a nice coffee. But I, I prefer to not have people leave stuff in the refrigerator um, as much as possible. And I don't think, usually the stuff shouldn't be left there for a whole week, you know, which is like occupied, occupies a whole week. So there shouldn't be, we, we need to make maybe smaller quantities um, you know, or, and probably it would be good to stay in touch, uh, you know, with, with each other. <coughs> I'd say if, if you're going to bring something, what about making, uh, say, what? four servings of something, yeah. you know, and then, you know, adjusting that according to, you know, how many people are come, planning to come and, you know, um, and, and you wouldn't say 20 servings? No, because okay, okay. that's what that's what hands that's raised, what ends up raised. getting left behind. And frankly, you know, <coughs> Dave and I can't eat everything. Chuck, <laughs> uh, we are very fortunate. This gentleman is the only man or woman here who knows what he's talking about on this score. And therefore, I think I would appreciate it if you would, if you don't mind, write up some of these suggestions yeah, you yeah. have. I've got to go home. Yeah, yeah I, I want to defer to Loki here because Loki, you know, there was some politics waved around in terms of like what was said about basically who was going to take over the kitchen. I want to understand it. I'm not taking over a kitchen. Oh, Loki I'm not. Loki's been here for no, a while, I'm, I'm and I want her to you. be able to be have some sort of, you know, supervisory control over because I think she seems to know what she's going to. That's all I'm saying. Well, you you yeah. made the remark that the house. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I want to get on that. <laughs> well, that's Jesus, right. Man. Here's the other thing. Oh, I'm sorry, Chuck. Go ahead. Go ahead. You, were you made the remark that the health department can come in here. If that that yeah. should awaken people up. Yeah. Okay. Because they could shut the they could shut. And I know for a fact the health department. I think they, they could shut down. All right, so now Any we're going to shut this conversation. Okay, just can I say one more thing about what he was mentioning yes. though about because Mary said she wanted to sign on too. Yeah, yeah we can like Mary do that too. Well. Uh, sign on to it. Uh, yeah. I don't mind having people in the kitchen so long as they're in there to cook something, prepare something, or help out. But it's not a social area because it is a kind of a dangerous area if I'm cooking in there with the oven, the stove, and all that kind of stuff. So that's the only other thing that I've seen. It's really a puny little thing to talk about, but that's the only other thing that I like cut up. No, I have one thing I really want to say. But uh, I believe that people who want to cook in this kitchen, maybe you could, you know, I brought in that one thing with food code, food code for dummies, basically, that everybody who works in that kitchen should read that and be willing to follow it. Okay, good. Uh, you got, is that the one you gave me and you wanted me to read? Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, we got it. This is what I, I don't even understand why we're becoming like a. What? Because the kitchen police! My I gosh, you guys! Not, we're not talking about being the kitchen police, Mary. We're talking about being safe. Uh, you just want to be safe. I didn't say anything. Well, okay, There's conversation. We are moving on. Did we create a food committee? So yes. We can take this all off? We're yes. Yes. yes, we're done. We're done. done. Yeah. It's, it's, can deal with this is, this is, this is cool. dissolved. Sure. But, but thank you. That's really important for everybody's safety, and I really appreciate being able to get some awesome stuff here. Yeah. So thank you, everyone who's done all this work. And I know this is a yeah. heavy yeah. yeah, thank you. I just okay. like, let's give you guys a hand. Like, it's thank important no, to do done. it right. Oh. We're done. Conversation cut. Sorry. Um, we only have so much time. Com Comment last, what the heck is that? Sheriff State? Stanick. Stanick. Can the Stanick thing be fairly brief? 
Uh, All right. Well, yeah, let's that's just, free. Just, I'm going to give you five minutes. How's that? Okay, let's go. Uh, I was not here last week. I did watch the meeting online. And at some point, uh, Sheriff Stanek came up as a topic. And someone made a comment, and again, this is online, it can be retrieved from the archive, made a comment to the effect of he's going to get killed or someone is going to kill him. What? What? Huh? Um, as I say, it's on the archive. I don't think so. Well, as I say, it's on the archive. We're talking about him running for governor. That's right. Okay. Um, I don't, I, to be honest, I don't think this is a really appropriate conversation to be talking about, especially when we're live streaming it. Well, I can scratch the audio if it's a sensitive well, thing. Um, uh, I do. Okay. Do you want, do you um, want? This is a uh, if people want to discuss whether to turn this on or off, I'll wait for that discussion. Just go right ahead. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like. uh, very briefly, uh, first of all, it, uh, it, it was clear to me that it was not a threat. It was somebody speculating that this might happen. However, I think it can be seen as an incitement. There have been public officials recently, there's a prison commissioner, a Corrections Commissioner in Colorado, who was recently killed. And I just want to raise this as an issue. Again, I'm very concerned about us being absolutely clear that we are opposed to nonviolence. And I'm sorry. We're opposed to violence. We're opposed to violence. And a comment like that is dangerous at several levels. It's an incitement. Uh, again, this is being live streamed, and so I simply want to raise this issue uh, and simply make everybody aware that that is totally an inappropriate comment to make at a meeting like this. Uh, okay. We all have free speech. Can, well, can I make a direct yeah. response? <laughs> like, okay, I, one I, voice and Dan, go ahead. Okay. I... I ran the live stream. I don't remember anything like that. I do remember people talking about how Stanek is arranging to run for governor. Yeah. Um, and I think it's also important to disambiguate uh, between speech that people may find tasteless versus that which is unlawful under things like libel law, fighting words, you know, definitions like that. Um, so I, I can agree with you that you know, speculating about violence happening to government officials is not in good taste. And, it, and as long as it's not uh, explicit incitement, it's, I don't believe it's unlawful speech, however. Um, but I agree with you that that's not very tasteful. But I don't remember that happening. So maybe we can go back and look at it. Maybe that happened in that political segment. That was when we were talking about standing. But maybe you misheard. The microphone's not always very good. So, Chuck. Any, anyway. Uh, oh, wait, actually, can I just also finish, though, like, <laughs> sorry. Part of the problem, though, is that, like, um, you know, if you break it down, look at, like, Thoreau's, like, philosophy, like, by participating in the political system, you do perpetuate violence downwards. So you can have ideals of saying we want to live in a nonviolent world, but if you go to the store and buy a soda, you pay sales taxes that partially go to make sure the government is armed to, co to coerce people to threaten violence against them. So we are always in a milieu of violence, and it's very difficult to figure out how to extricate ethically from the violent system. And like, I think that's important. And so just to say, well, by default, normality is nonviolent, and we need to keep hewing to that is not accurate, because actually, our normal situation is actually a system of extreme state violence. And I think we need to try to take that in perspective. That's important. That's all. Thank you. Brief. We have two minutes. I'm going to ask you to follow Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King wasn't a pacifist either. He uh, called had Eisenhower called the 101st Airborne to make sure that they would time to get to school. He had the police escort them. He hired off-duty police officers at a 1963 uh, uh, march on Washington. Uh, but Martin Luther King understood, and I understand, as Martin Luther King did, that violence tactics are stupid in the United States. It's just not the way to get things done here. And Martin Luther King got things done. Uh, so um, uh, I don't remember the comment 
with, with, with beautiful range. Well, Bob, I, did, I do remember uh, someone were talking about pulling down uh, towers, um, pulling down uh, uh, electrical towers, or, or uh, maybe destroying the pipeline in the same way that people uh, brought down electrical towers in the 80s. The same person at a committee meeting, not this meeting, but I, I think it was at a committee meeting, talked about using baseball bats to defend a house. Uh, I think that we have to uh, publicly disagree with those kind of statements. Uh, yes, people have the right to freedom of speech, but that kind of speech is not going to get us in trouble. We'll ensure that we'll ensure that we will have cops in this room that are, that are at, at our actions. We'll ensure it. I'll guarantee it. I've seen it happen before. I've been doing this for 50 years, 25 years after I know what I'm talking about. Okay, was anybody else on stack or can we uh, move on to uh, communities of light project? Anybody else? Okay, let's let's just go. Gillette, well, the communities of light project, there some, Chuck, that you? Okay, um, I just want to make you aware of this. A lot of times here I sense uh, a, a desire to find uh, a, a, a community-based way to essentially make a living and so forth. This is from the Alley newspaper, which runs uh, down by Maria's Cafe. It's East Phillips, Stewart, and Elliot. In the back, they discuss something called Community of Light Program, in which their community, people like you all, have gotten together to learn how to make and distribute solar uh, power generators. And they're training people, and it's community-based, and has a lot of the features that I hear kind of under, you know, uh, as a theme here. But they're doing it. And I have, uh, I have five copies, or four copies, because I want to keep one. And you, anyone that wants can grab on the back page. And then, um, I've also called the publisher and asked him to send me uh, cop, you know, stuff I can send out on the internet because I, I could only get these five. Although he told me to go back to Maria's and take them all. <laughs> he put they're, more. All the, they're all over Phillips. Yeah. Yeah, they're all over. Anyway, but I don't have them all. So anyway, I, I find that a very, you know, hopeful thing. Is it possible? Uh, to do that kind of thing, and, and, and it's kind of a model uh, to inspire other kinds of similar things. You say, how, well, maybe we won't do nuclear, or <laughs> nuclear, we won't do solar stuff, it will be something, something else. Okay. So, but it's working. Very That's cool. That's a key feature of it. Thanks, Chuck. Uh, um, I can, um, I just, if I can jump on, there's also uh, a, a project going on with a lot of different neighborhood groups and NGOs and stuff. I think it's called Minneapolis Energy Solutions because Excel Energy has a 20 year contract. And there's also another, so there's a Facebook page for that. And there's another one called Our Energy, which is, I think, run by some other activist folks that live around Phillips. So basically, Excel Energy has like a 20, like a, a long term contract. Maybe somebody else knows all the details about this. They have a long term contract with the city. And Excel Energy is a very conventional utility. So the idea is that if we could change up this deal with the city, then we could find more energy alternatives, local grid, micro generation, and stuff like that. So I know that they had a presence at March Against Monsanto, and I thought that was a real interesting sort of cross grouping. If anybody knows more about them. Isn't it about to expire? The long yeah, that's yeah. why people are doing this. It's, it's coming up like right now. So. Which also reminds me, we need to work on low power FM radio, but yeah. Nick. There's also some things going on with different, uh, I don't know what it's called, but like this makers group, and like they have 3D printers. I think I'm going to be getting a 3D printer soon to like mm. start doing some things like this. So that, that's definitely a, yeah. I'm glad you brought that up. Very cool. <coughs> Any more on the subject, or we can move on? It, it, that, right. That's called Twin Cities Makers, I think, and they have something called a hacker space, so there's like machine tools and stuff where people can learn to use this kind of technology. It's like things you'd find on lifehacker.com where you can like yeah. basically assemble gadgets and make things like this, yeah. Yeah. or like a wind turbine or whatever, and like putting things together in ways that weren't really like originally made for. Yeah, I have, I have a little work. model, and that is if, if, you, if, you, if you're doing something and it 
comes off great in a specific instance, then what I always say is, okay, fine, now generalize it. <coughs> Find a way to make it go bigger, you know, and be more dynamic. Don't just sit with your little thing. And I, I just happened to find this, and I thought, oh, that's pretty cool. Um, to piggyback on something similar to this real quick, if, uh, if last weekend um, there was a meeting called like Open, uh, it was for like a civic hacking weekend that was like a national project or whatever, and I let people know about that. Um, I do know a, people, a couple people that went down there. The idea is to get like local web developer type people to link up with government officials and be like, okay, this is the data that the government has that is not really easily accessible to people, so let's build little apps for it and stuff. So I wasn't able to make it down there on time, but what I heard was that it was a little goofier than my friend was expecting. Like people were making beer finding apps and stuff like that. But also interestingly, um, someone from the Bureau of Criminal Apprehension or related to the BCA had a huge data file of criminal intelligence data that they were uh, conviction data that they were showing someone how to process. So I have a little more information about that. Like hopefully. But the impression that my friend had was just that a guy from this, this, the chief information officer of the city of Minneapolis was like, no, we will not make open data available for you. And like, you, like for example, in Minneapolis, unlike most cities, you can't get online data about the safety of restaurants, which you can in places like New York. You can easily look up the ratings of restaurants. In, in Minneapolis, that does not exist. So there's closed data. People are pushing for it. They're getting kind of blown off by the guy from the city. I wish I'd been there to see it, but it's something that I think there'll be another event of, and so that was d done by like uh, Open Data Twin Cities or something like that. Yeah, Jen. Yeah, I just posted something on the Minneapolis issues list regarding they've been talking about um, auditing, you know, and uh, the lack of auditor auditing in, in Minneapolis. Um, we've only got one auditor for other cities of a comparable size have eight, and I commented that um, for citizens wishing to do their own research, uh, that the office of, you know, the uh, city clerk from whom comes, uh, you know, data practices, uh, they, they request go to the city clerk and they're supposed to fulfill those. Um, they've not been cooperative and to the point where um, they've been sued a couple times by a group that I'm working with and uh, it doesn't seem to uh, Changed their attitude at all, and the last time that they were sued, they gave the information, but I believe it was too small to read. <laughs> oh, seriously, I mean, these people are reprehensible. So, anyway, I wrote in and commented that um, the supposed transparency downtown, you know, really they like to brag about how democratic Minneapolis is. What an open city, and we're just so cool in so many ways, and it's a lie. But, at any rate, I, I posted that, and about five minutes later, <laughs> Hack, I think it's called Hack MN or something. Yeah, Hack MN yeah. was the hashtag. And somebody wrote, yeah. wrote and said, if you would like to request some, uh, you know, please let us know. Maybe we can help you get this information. And I'm, you know, I'd be interesting to go through them, but I'm, yeah. I'm sort of doubting that they will have any more success than our organization has because we deal with them all the time. Right. And it's it's information on police. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, any more comments or questions? Move on. All right. Um, debate. Nick, I think that was you. And then there was Enbridge, too. Yeah, do we want to talk about Enbridge? Or Maybe someone can give us. Governor or mail debates, whatever, if people want to actually like, look at news stuff like that. Oh, right. <clears throat> Can someone maybe give us the quick rundown on the state of the Enbridge situation? Susie's not here, but well, right just real now, quick. Um, this is it. Um, you know, they're, even though they haven't finalized the first phase of the expansion project, they're plowing forward with phase two, which is an additional capacity increase uh, in for line 67. And uh, it does provide for, you know, some different types of things that we might be able to do to be effective. And I, I, you know, I hate to keep you here too long, but I actually believe that the core of everything that we've spoken about tonight has to do with money, politicians, 
and it all comes from the things that they extract from this planet. Nothing that, everything that they are empowered with comes from this process. Not just oil, but everything, whether it's solar power, and I'll talk about that in a minute uh, in relation to this, but um, that's how they get rich, and that's why I think this is where, uh, is one of the best places to attack them, because this is where they get the money to feed the politicians that uh, takes the food out of everybody else's mouth and builds them mansions. So uh, we're going to have a few months to respond to this and to try and clog this process up. And uh, I would like to invite everybody from the group to become part, an active part, of working towards that end and as a group do something about this besides simply attacking the Public Utilities Commission. And it's, we've got to get beyond banners and signs with this and um, I, I have some ideas for how I think legitimately we could actually stop them, but I need more people to be able to do it. I, uh, I need people to uh, help do things like, um, you know, make flyers and things so when we go up to some communities where they're going to install new pumping stations, this new expansion requires them to put, uh, install new pumping stations in Donaldson, Plummer, mm -hmm. Cass Lake, and, uh, and, and, flood, and Floodwood. Um, so um, these are all things that have not been constructed yet. They're not in place. And we can uh, do some significant uh, disruption there in terms of you know, slowing down their process and so on. Uh, making them, holding them accountable, <laughs> holding the pipeline people accountable for every inch of uh, pipe uh, that they put in and making sure that they actually had permission to install it on that. It's a lot of detail work. Um, but we already know that on this same line, there are, have already been found two places that they didn't have permission to be on. Actually, it's not the same line for uh, Leonard. Uh, that's another line. But um, we will find another piece of land on that many miles. Statistically, uh, they're the largest liquid pipeline company on Earth. And they have a history of it not having permission to have these on uh, there we'll find so we'll find one more. If we find that, they can't expand it because they can't expand the pipeline. It's not a complete system yet. It will stop them from doing that. Um, they very deftly. I made a comment about it to the Public Utilities Commission, and they very deftly ignored it. And in, in, in a legal process, if they go on and on about something, uh, there's something else they don't want you to see, and it's the thing they said three words about. So I think they realize there's a problem there because the title of this document is no new right of way or pipeline construction required <laughs> um, and because they want you to think they've already done it all um, so I but I need people willing to help documents I'm asking you all to help with this process and get directly involved uh, in doing this to stop this um, we've talked a lot about solar here and I'm just gonna I'm breezing right past this I'm, you're gonna get an email in Polly I'm gonna set up a meeting for people to come and in Polly's email blast you're gonna see an invitation in there to come to a meeting uh, to help stop this uh, ex this second expansion project it makes this pipeline the largest tar sands pipeline in North America it beats the Keystone XL pipeline and I think it's actually pretty easier than you think to stop it I, I think we can do it in two months um, Solar energy, uh, we we've, people t tout this as being the, the answer to everything. And um, the, I, the company that I'm a part of uh, deals with wind energy, and we know quite a bit about solar energy as well. And uh, my business partner um, wrote the program that uh, controls all the sales of uh, wind energy uh, or energy from individual consumers back into the grid, right? You have to, they have to buy it back from you, right? So there's a program, they have to buy it back from you. Well, they're not gonna let that go on. They're not gonna let that continue, right? As soon as everybody starts to get these small scale things in, in their houses, that was just a, they, they had a reason that they wanted that. And as soon as we actually start to do it, it's gonna take their profits away from them. So they're gonna stop that. And we need to be watching for that to happen in advance because uh, that will disempower individuals from being able to make their own uh, uh, power and fuel their home or their business or whatever. So um, just that, I'm throwing that out. It was from previous conversation. And 
I wanted to make a couple of points. The, um, there was a final court ruling on the Enbridge attempt to go through um, British Columbia to the Pacific. Oh, yeah, I was supposed to make And that was that. finalized. And um, so everything that in the, in the Canadian system that was going to allow them to do that is pretty much stopped. And I heard from some people um, uh, from the uh, Kuda Ray tribe that because of the um, on the ground resistance from all the indigenous people up there, that they're not going to try to do that again. You know, that yes. Whatever happens, you know, yes. they're gonna, they just that the indigenous folks gathered so much sympathy that it, you know, it's just a mountain. They, they dumped, confiscated, they confiscated a truck yesterday um, somewhere else at a different place, but yeah. Autonomous action, what? But the other thing is, um, the, uh, there's also a lot of sympathy for this um, Pinocchi Hills uh, mine that um, all of the tribes in Wisconsin have come together and are against this. And, uh, there was a big thing where um, they were trying to do some mining in, in Wisconsin that ended up with the good mining law that had, that had the moratorium on the line. And that was started and supported by um, the Menominee tribe in Wisconsin and all the other tribes back them up and then they got political well, there, support. There is an occupation now at Pennacky Hills. Yeah, um, there's a native has, occupation. I was up there. My cabin is about 40 miles from where. Oh, the it Central is. Is, yeah. So I was up. I went up there for one day, and I met um, Paul Demain, who does Indian Country TV mm -hmm. or Indian Country News dot com and Indian Country TV dot com uh, or dot org. But anyway. He, he has a, for those that don't know, I'm going to interrupt you briefly. He has a resort up there, right? <laughs> it's a resort. <laughs> it's, 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 it's 40 miles. I have a 10 bedroom. It was a restaurant, bar, and has a couple of apartments attached to it. So right now it sleeps about 30, 34 people, but it's on three acres on the Chippewa River, which I discovered. Well, we'll be meeting there. Um, the Pinocchi so, mine that they're talking about. Some of the water, you know, some of the watershed in in this mining area goes into Lake Superior and the Indians um, through Bad River, uh, yeah. Bad River watershed. But also, some of it comes into the Chippewa flowage watershed, which is the water that goes by my place. Yeah, so I discovered I had a personal stake in this. Um, but anyway, get they're really trying to get people together and. Um, they're taking the opinion, you know, they're, they're making public, the elders have decided this mine will not happen. And the tribes will do whatever it takes to see that this mine does not happen. And the same thing is, I don't know what happens with the um, intertribal politics in Minnesota, so I don't, I, I wish Patty were here. Well, I know quite a bit about it, actually. So um, I think that what we're talking about here is that most of the focus within the native organizing groups has been to organize specifically uh, in Canada or to focus on the Keystone XL pipeline. And a lot of the resources within the native community have gone there, and there's a large population of, of you know, natives in the area of the Keystone XL pipeline, so they have a lot of... Uh, people there, they also have a lot of land that that pipeline uh, crosses through. So it's really, it's taken a lot of resources to fight that pipeline. And yet this pipeline here is a bigger pipeline. 
It's a significantly larger well, pipeline if they get all this through. So. He's talking about Pinocchio Hills. Yeah, yeah, but I think there's just not as many natives here, and so that's what mm -hmm. I, I'm concerned that they don't have the backup to pull this up, but I don't know. Pinocchio Hills is different. That's I, Well, it's not different because there's a lot of um, a woman from Red Lake that's organizing the Red Lake sure. band was at this sure. meeting um, to support the Pinocchio sure. Hills. And there's a, a strong focus on bringing the, the tribes together okay. yes. uh, to fight both. Oh, to fight both of them. Is that what they... Yeah. Okay. And the thing is that... Um, Can I ask a question? Uh, there's a debate topic. I'm just wondering whose topic that was. Wow. You'd rather talk yeah. about this. Okay. <clears throat> so... Um, I was just really impressed with everybody I met up there. Uh, they don't call him a chief, but he's the head of the tribal council. His last name is Wiggins. Um, oh, yeah, Chairman there's Wiggins. Yeah. There's a few videos of him. And he does a really beautiful job about talking about how water is life. And they're messing with our yeah. life. Well, he, he's part of this group, and he's, and yeah. I, I have, they want to come to this meeting, and so when I, you know, send this out on Polly's email blast, that those people, with, uh, Chairman Wiggins, and they, they are part of that group, they have requested that North Star, enter, that they be invited to our meetings, and that they become part of this discussion, so I've got everything. Um, I'm really good at getting media up in Duluth. So if you ever want to, if you, I don't know much about this. I care about it, but I don't know a lot about it. I haven't had a lot of time. But if you could find the people to put together, you know, and we could have a press conference in Duluth. I know the editor of the Duluth News Tribune. Okay. I could get a lot of media to show up, and I think that's been a part of the problem, the lack of media on this. Yeah, yes. uh, yeah. I know all the activists up in Duluth. So if there was a little media attention, I think they could get activated on the issue. Okay, good. Very good. Thanks. Um, it's so cool that people are still sitting around here uh, and are concerned about this. So I'm just going to put another plug out, especially for those that aren't fully educated. And there's so much to, to learn, right, um, about sulfide mining. Uh, we've been focusing a lot on, on the tar sands, which is most awesome and excellent. Um, but there's also uh, this whole issue of sulfide mining. Um, it's happening, at least uh, corporations would like it to happen in northern Minnesota. And in Minnesota, they call it non-ferrous mining. There's been iron mining in northern Minnesota that's traditionally gone on through the Misabi Range. Um, but there's this non-ferrous mining and companies like Polymet and Twin Metals uh, um, and a lot of international corporations are going to, if we don't stop them, they're going to uh, probably ruin uh, the uh, water in northern Minnesota, ruin uh, the environment for wild rice growing, ruin the environment for um, you know, uh, carbon sinks, natural carbon sinks, which relates to global warming. I mean, there's all sorts of things that are in the pipelines. Um, and also in Wisconsin, uh, they have, actually it's iron sulfide mining that's proposed in the Pinocchio Hills. Um, and so there are all these issues going on uh, that uh, are happening all at once. Um, and if you want a source for a lot of information, um, including like indigenous voices on the topics, um, I recommend going to um, our website, our world ourworldindepth.org. Um, I've been posting uh, a series of speakers from the I Don't Know More conference, which I, I think is one of the best environmental um, symposiums I've ever seen. Um, and it's up, it's up on the Our World In Depth website. I, there's a couple more speakers that I'll add tonight, but it's basically all up there. So, and, and people are very educated on the, the topics, and not only covering all the technical aspects of sulfide mining and where it's happening and who's planning on doing it, um, but also some of the uh, almost like spiritual aspects of this, because it's kind of, 
everything's kind of connected. Um, and so there are people that get that. Um, and so, mm -hmm. I, you anyway. You talk about the CD? What's that? The CD. About the symposium. Right. It's on, it's on ourworldindepth.org. I highly recommend it. I'm glad you enjoyed the symposium. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was so well organized, and uh, yeah, I, I, you know, uh, Patricia was here earlier, or Patty was here earlier, and I just think that her organizing that she's been doing has been amazing. Um, so anyway, there it is. We're just gonna go around now because it just kind of just died. Okay, I, I, I was aware at first. Yeah, they need that copper in order to build out. Uh, they, they have they have it to make wiring and communications devices for India and China and every, you know so they can't they have to have it. Sulfide mining. I don't know if you wanted to. I'll just say very briefly, like um, it's fairly you know it's like the tar sands in a way. It's it's not a really like fast way to get at the mineral. They have to basically like use acid to to burn around to get to get to the mineral that they want. Um, and it's there's lots of uh, externalities involved. That's the economics term. But I mean, does, does the name come from there's like salts in it that's going to be in the water then? Or sulfuric. They use sulfuric acid, I believe. Okay. Yeah. I, I think. So, uh, I'm not a geologist or anything, but I think there's like, I think there's an issue of like sulfur in the in the tailings. Right. So like you dig up all, and then and then there's tailings, and then when the when the rain hits the tailings, it creates, when the water hits the sulfur, then it creates sulfuric acid that that kind of leaches into the river system. But I don't. Know. <laughs> Yeah, that's, um, that sounds right. But I, you know, what I think is a really, really big problem. I used to uh, work a lot on this issue up there, and I, I care about it more than anything else. Um, the Sierra Club was not supportive of us while we were actually doing protests on on the Polymet executive coming to Duluth. Um, Friends of the Boundary Waters is the representative Jason Metza. He's a young guy, just took over for Representative Tommy Rukavina. Um, he, you know, he's like. He, this YouTube video got released, and, and Metz is saying, oh yeah, I'm going to debunk all this misinformation of these environmentalists who are attacking copper nickel mining. Um, and then this guy who works for the Friends of the Boundary Waters clicked the like button on this video that went up on Facebook, and it's like, and I, I contacted this guy from Friends of the Boundary Waters, and I'm like, what are you doing? Why are you clicking the like button on the guy who's trying to destroy, you know, everything that you claim to care about? Yeah. Um, I think we need to put pressure on the Sierra Club, Friends of the Boundary Waters. Uh, I think, you know, it's a bigger problem when there's groups that are pretending to solve the problem, you know. Well, I think Sierra Club's really changed their position. I know that um, that we met with Sierra Club and 350 Indigenous yeah. Environmental Network and other right before 350's Do the Math Tour. and. We talked about the fact that you know they were going to start getting involved in direct action, and now they have 50, somewhere between 50 and 60 thousand people that have signed their signature and to get arrested if Obama approves the Keystone XL. So we have a significant number of people. That's national. Yeah, yeah that's but, national. That's the first time but that was that years. was Margaret Levin, and she is the one that announced that at that oh, at the symposium, and she was the one that I had the discussion with prior to Bill McKinnon. I was, I was pushing pretty hard on her when she wouldn't support any of the stuff they, we're I doing. Think that, about I think that she is supportive. Yeah, you can, she is you can see her video oh, online yeah. at the okay. website. Yeah. 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 yeah, and she looks back at me right when she says it because I, I was the one with the meeting and that we, you know, 
Marty and I talked about doing direct action, and it wasn't really part of the discussion until he mentioned the eight acres of land there. And I said, how many people do you want? When would you like them to show up? And then, you know, and then the discussion switched to direct action and on the way out. Uh, she said, well, we haven't done direct action, you know, really in the past. And I said, isn't it a good thing that you have an opportunity to get started? <laughs> and, and so I think that changed. That's great. I, I do, because... I, I, was it 350 that's doing this? Credo Mobile yeah. is also putting out their Credo thing. Yeah. They're, they're getting people to sign up to do this survey. Yes. Will you do direct action? Will yeah. you do this? Yeah. And they're insisting oh, that's that, that in order to respond to this list, yeah, you gotta. that you provide a telephone. Yeah. Otherwise, you can't give, you know, so they're like, it's okay, a lot yeah. marketing let's, opportunity. Let's call, call the population and find out who's real, who we really have to arrest. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, you know, I, I mean, I, I see why, the, I, I understand why they, why they do that. And, you know, like, I'm highly skeptical of all of these uh, organizations and their ability to follow, to follow through. And uh, on that note, there is a Utah, you know, tar sands uh, resistance uh, training in southern Utah, in Green River, Utah, the third week of July, and it will become an international conference there. They're going to come from all over North America. People will be meeting there to uh, train and to discuss and create trusting relationships among people all over North America because that's the site of the first tar sands mine in north of, or in uh, the United States is in Utah. We need a bus. We do. We need a bus. We need to go to that. I am going to that. I'm already committed to go. Um, so uh, we do. We need to send a bunch of people there. It's <coughs> kicking all over the country. People sitting in trees. There's people sitting on trees. <laughs> this is a, this is a, the thing I would, I would really caution what? people about this location is that it's in the third week of July and it's in southern Utah and it's a very harsh, very, very hot environment. It's extremely dry. It's the second driest state in the United States and you really have to be physically able to be out in that kind of heat and, and weather that time of year and if that if you can't do it and it's clear out in the middle of nowhere once you get out there if you start you know having problems you're going to have to get airlifted out of this place it's it's not like being a few miles to the closest town it's canyons and small roads and stuff so it's a very remote the biggest thing about all these issues though is oh, like yeah. what you were talking about is the water and, uh, oh, yeah. I was watching some study earlier. Uh, there's actually a number of them out right now about how water has like a molecular difference. Where like you can take like a sample of water from any given place and everyone will take a drop of water and use it. And every person that touched that droplet is going to have a different imprint on the water itself. Which is like, they, they did a study in Japan about this. Yes, I'm referencing in a, a German one right now that I just watched today. But they did a study in Japan where you could take a glass of water and say something like hate, and it would have this jagged edge to it. And yes. you could say something like love, and it would make this beautiful snowflake. And it's so crazy to think about that in terms of like what the natives are saying about the spirituality and how much our body is actually made up out of water. In the long term, it, that's, that's why it's so important. And I, the life. Sorry. Yeah, and I it think actually that, changes the molecular structure yeah. of the water when right. you affect. And and this whole thing, this this book is like when I, I took a couple of people and we went to the first treaty signing in uh, Yankton. And um, is that still going? Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, a couple of us went there, and um, and I and another person, uh, you know, Occupy Wall Street media people, essentially. And these, the young people that I took there, they said that it changed their life forever and that it will be the most significant thing that they've ever done in their life because it's, it, and, and the natives will even tell you, it's like Occupy Wall Street with a heart because it's a deeply rooted in 
tradition and ceremony and culture and love and family. It's a, uh, you know, it's what we're trying to establish here by having our meals and getting to know everybody. And, yeah. and uh, that's, you know, we've developed, that's taken longer. They had it all along and now they're mad, you know, <laughs> and uh, they invited us to come and I think we should uh, join them at every opportunity. We're getting off the page now, Dan. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, I suppose it's end of time. Um, we had the, the sorry. More than you think. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I just want to mention, like, did you guys cover the, the debate stuff that Nick had mentioned earlier? No. Um, yeah, so maybe we should set up another doodle to have a meet, like, to see if people want to have a meeting about that debate. We could just put that out and just say, okay, here's the time and schedule. Like, we could try to put up, get a group together to talk about a mayoral debate. So, same format as the, uh, the, the reoccupy spinoff, just sort of say, you know, people just, here's time when you got available to talk about this. Does that seem like a good idea to kind of just yes. see yep. if we can get the debate yeah. idea rolling? Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. 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 Oh, that would way over my head. Nothing happens until we make a decision to get it on the <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, we have like yeah. three months. Yeah, yeah. Well, but you, well, you, you, know, you, know, you want to get mayoral debate as soon as you I know, I know, I know. I know, I know. I lived with you for like what? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't like that long. I don't think it was support for It was like a year. Cool. All right. Yes. Okay. I think we're going to. I think we're going to call it there. All right. Good night, everybody. All right.